doesn't like my name. Don't worry about that. It's it's a terrible name. He wants to call the show Encyclopedia Nerdtanica. <laughs> That's not the name. The name of the show is Back Issues. Welcome to Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Hey, I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Ben. And hey, everybody. Welcome to Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. <laughs> and I'm Batman. <laughs> Fine, I'm Ben. Right. That's my Welcome to Back Issues, uh, the comic book conversation show where I explain comics to two guys who, when they were children, probably had better things to do than read them, like kiss girls and play sports. I'm guessing that's probably, I'm not telling tales out of school here. Neither of those things, actually. Well, anyway. Both of those things, actually. Good comics, everybody, and welcome to the weekly comic book discussion series where I explain, through my years of reading comics, the idea or concept or character of uh, or from comics to two guys who just didn't spend the time when they were children reading them uh, and kind of have just a little bit of knowledge, if that, of what I'm talking about. I've read comics for my entire, my entire life. Uh, I'm 31. I'm not ashamed to say it. And uh, I've been reading comics for like 25 years and I'm a huge fan and as such, as we comic book readers know, we've absorbed all this information rather than math and science and you know how to talk to women. We've learned so much about like who Galactus is and the Eternals and what multiversity is all about. Where I take a book that I've read and know intimately and I share it with two of my friends who just don't know anything about it or if they do it's really really like basic superficial yeah so do you guys don't even know the Green Lantern Oath probably no know. no uh, uh, in darkest day in blackest night in brightest day in blackest night I wish I may, <laughs> I wish I may. <laughs> no it's it's uh, a brightest day in blackest night uh, I'll let no evil escape my sight no evil shall escape, shall escape my sight I'm close yeah you're getting there well, there's more? Yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> you don't even know the lyrics to the Tick animated theme song, of all things. Just hey, well, examples. you know I watched the Tick. Yeah, what are the lyrics? Oh, no, I didn't, but no. you didn't know that. No, I did. In my head, I'm trying to play it. I'm just like, da 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 freakazoid, freakazoid, <laughs> shit. That's not it. Nope, that's oh, not yeah. it. Two guys who probably don't know what the original Sin was. I don't know. You didn't either until you read this book, though. I don't even know what it is now, and I read the book. <laughs> oh, no. I know biblically. I mean, like, I get... No, I don't know what the original sin is. This is the weekly installment of shows from Little House Online where I talk about comics to two guys who seem to like them a little more than I think they did when we first started. The Tick has that rabbit guy, right? That's Arthur, and he's a moth. Yeah. Oh. It's actually a running gag of the show and comic, is <laughs> that people right. think that Arthur's a rat. And uh, these two uh, went outside and went camping and had friends and did other things with their childhood. And as a result, they don't know anything about what's happening in comics or what happened over the not, last... Not any. We know something. Well, that, well yeah. Very thanks little. to the show, they've actually learned quite a bit. But yeah. the idea is that, well, the conceit of the show was they don't really know much about what's going on. And they ask questions about stories, characters, plot lines, continuity that we comic book readers take for granted. You know, if someone says, you know, okay, uh, if the Flash wants to go back in time, he's going to use the cosmic treadmill. As comic book readers, we're like, well, yeah. How else is he going to travel back in time? But these two were like, what's the cosmic treadmill? Why is there a treadmill? Yeah, where does it, what does it sit on? Yeah, who like, built it? Yeah, yeah where did it come they from? All kinds of exact, why, why does it need to be a treadmill? Why can't it just run through space? Yeah, why, I thought he ran really fast. So what's the theme song of the tick? It's scat. It's da dwee da 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 dwee da. Okay. Ba bee da 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 dee da. Skeet dee dee ba dee 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 da da da. No. You had the first chunk and then you just went off book. You had the part that Sal already did. There's no way that a treadmill could actually make him faster. Yeah, I think he powers it up by right by running like his speed. So it's like a Tesla coil or something like that. Well, it's like a generator or something. Yeah, I don't know. He has to get it no. to 1.8 1. gigabytes. Yeah, 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. it activates and says, I don't know. <laughs> 1. 1.8 megabytes! Don't explain know. it. Did I actually mention the name of the show? Did I say it's Back Issues? No. I don't know. Welcome to Back Issues! <laughs> he said, welcome to comics! <laughs> welcome to comics! <laughs> hey, comics! The world of comics. We're going to talk about one or two comics. I don't know. I had a bunch of comics on my kitchen table, and Ethan was like, what is this? And it spiraled into this, so uh, yeah, you know, well, kick it off. All right. So I was looking at this, and it's got... Um, an insane cover. It's got a dude like with half of his face covered in this thing. No, I know this is Venom. Like, I'm not, I know, this dude. I'm more, like I know Venom. Yeah, like you know what Venom is. But like I don't. I never read comics, so I don't. That's why it's so funny because like I, you know, I, I know this Venom. This is as yeah. familiar to me as like a picture of my mom. But yeah. like, but he was so fucking popular. 
He was so ninety spectacular. He was so fucking awesome. He was rad and cool. Because there's and like he needed... spit and shit coming out of That's his mouth. that is actually later. It's like, actually really uncomfortable to look at. It's it's actually uh, it's it when in the very beginning when McFarlane created helped create and develop the look for Venom. McFarlane's Venom had big teeth. They weren't like gnarly and drooly and shit. Like okay. he didn't have like a gum disease. Eric Larson, who created and drew Savage Dragon, back in this time he drew the Hulk, which who could imagine the guy who drew the Hulk invented the Savage Dragon, who was just the Hulk with a fin on his head. <laughs> Welcome to Back Issues. This is the second episode. Um, we're here in scenic funny books, comics, and stuff in Lake Hiawatha, New Jersey. Information down in the description box below. You can find out more about this great comic book retailer. Um, Steve Conti, the creator, has been kind enough to let us kind of use it. Um, you may be familiar with the setting based on my show, uh, Sal Says What, which is filmed on location here as well. So, you know, we're getting as much mileage as we can out of this. Beating a dead horse. Gen 13. Gen 13. I know all of you are sighing. Just yeah. bear with us. Or not. So no more than I am on the inside. Yeah. No, trust me. No one is a proud fan of Gen 13. Well, there might be people who have no idea what it is, like me. Like you, that's yeah. true. And Ben only has some familiarity with with uh, Gen 13, as yep. I remember. A little bit. Um, the art in this book reminds me a lot of Marvel, especially the X-Men. Well, that's a good... It's actually an interesting point. You should bring that up, because the artist, or rather, the collection of artists of this book, because it's not just one artist. This is, by the way, there's volume... Four, there's four names on this book. Yes, yeah. and none of them write, so... <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> That That's the thing, art. they don't care. Image is like, well, whatever, it's all about the image. It's all about what we drew. Right. So, like, the Founding Fathers create all these awesome things, and, uh, oh, they, they use that experience to, like, leverage the bigger companies to, like, let them write. So, ultimately, Marvel gave Cotton Todd and Farland, like, a Spider-Man book. That's where all the creators from Image kind of made their bones in writing and creating. I'm not going to lie. Todd uh -huh. McFarlane pops in my head, and I, th I just think Spawn. Oh, yeah. Spawn well, Todd McFarlane is, is Spawn. I mean, and like... You look at some of the graphics from those books, and they are really detailed. Listen, uh, I, I, I own the first... 90 issues of Spawn, which is, like, the saddest thing to ever say. <laughs> um... But and, and I don't know why I'm not using it for insulation in the house because it's totally <laughs> worthless. But for this very like three year window of time, uh, those were worth a lot. Believe you me. Right. I if I had a time machine, but I could make. They're gonna be worth even more. No, they will not. <laughs> Well, they Actually, were, they might. They were supposed to be. No, they might be worth more because everyone threw theirs away. Right. When everything became worthless. Yeah, so if you wait another, like, 20 years. Yeah, oh, so yeah. we are talking about Batman, and, of course, I, I could have gone with something like more classic, more enduring, like Year One or Dark Knight Returns. No, I went with Death in the Family. Death in the Family is a classic 1980s uh, story arc that takes place in the Batman continuity. It's the post-crisis continuity, but the pre-New 52 continuity. When I say post-crisis, when I'm yeah, referring to... Yeah, I was going to ask, like, yeah, yeah, post-crisis what is, makes what is crisis? to me. What is crisis? Is that That's a crisis whole episode. On Infinite Earth? Yes, it is. I, 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 yeah. Uh, if you you yeah. may have all seen the cover, and it's just, it looks like what I described Avengers vs. JLA to be, just a clusterfuck. It was also yeah. drawn by George Perez, which is why it looks like that. Yeah. Um, crisis was the DC Comics editorial department figuring out how to make sense of all the DC comics that took place from 1937 to 1985. Batman went to space and he made friends with these aliens and he had sex with this woman and he had children and they all became Batman and Robin and like Superman had like little impish sidekicks and it, 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 there was, it was so much, much. shit yeah. that took place that was silly and bullshit from the 40s but then there was some super surreal stuff that took place in the 70s. Wasn't there a monkey that was a Superman? Yeah, Superman had a whole had line a of dog. Oh yeah, Superman had a whole line of super pets. Uh, I think Comet was the super horse. <laughs> Beppo the super monkey. Oh, and Crypto. Crypto's the dog. Okay. Uh, Crypto's the only thing they actually kept. Anyway, this is the post-crisis world where uh, Batman has a sidekick, Dick Grayson. Uh, Dick Grayson was an acrobat whose parents were killed by a dickhead, and he uh, becomes Robin. Um, he eventually rejects Batman and becomes Nightwing. Batman needs a new Robin. So in the new post-crisis origin of Jason Todd, Robin 2, um, Robin is a street urchin uh, who was boosting tires off the Batmobile. And uh, so Batman oh, tracks scam. him down. Exactly. What a rascal. And uh, Batman was so impressed by his ability to boost tires off the Batmobile mm -hmm. Um, bat tires. Bat tires. Does not even work on like normal cars? Yeah, I don't know. I think that. What's I, the point? Well, I think it's more. You like, need a bat ratchet. Probably like custom. <laughs> a batchet. In 1996, Marvel Comics files for bankruptcy. Right. And Wait, Marvel's comics filed for bankruptcy? Oh yeah, Marvel was so fucked by the economic collapse of comic books in general that Marvel couldn't sustain 
itself. So it actually filed Chapter 11, and uh, <clears throat> it was only when they brought in this like new hotshot corporate president named Bill Jemis that things started to turn around. It was him that contacted his friends over at Fox and had them pick up the rights to X-Men. It was him that called up his friends at Sony and they got Spider-Man, and he contacted a bunch of different people to like help reinvigorate the franchise. Uh, and then Jemis went, hey, how come there's no Spider-Man movie? And they're like, oh, it's a whole thing. Uh, Wizard Magazine wrote a whole big thing about it. And he's like, what the fuck is Wizard Magazine? <laughs> Have you tried using a lawyer? And so he fucking took care of that in like a year. <laughs> Avengers Disassembled came about because Brian Michael Bendis helped write this whole thing. He was brought in by, I think it was editor-in-chief at the time, Joe Quesada. This young buck is going to fucking change everything. And indeed he did. And Bendis was really tight with dialogue, and he's really great with uh, with character moments. The thing he's not really great about is continuity. He's like, he, he cares about it, he's interested in it, mm -hmm. but if it gets in the way of his story, he's like, nah. nah. And he has the characters just very di dismissively say things like, you know, oh, well, I don't remember. Not his own continuity, though. <laughs> no, he, well, like, he, you know, it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the decades of continuity. He has a character meet another character, and he doesn't know, because he didn't do the research, that those characters met in a book 10 or 15 years ago. Right. So he's writing their first meeting, oh. and then, like, it turns out they met one time. Doesn't Marvel have people that look at that? You'd like, think they do, and I think they're called continuity directors, but right. for some reason it like always happens. position that someone's well, paid You know what's do. funny? You could probably just throw the book on a message board and say, hey, who wants to fucking proofread this book? And people would do it for nothing. Yeah. Well, I mean, you would leak the entire story yeah, beforehand, and you wouldn't make a whole lot of money. Yeah. But, oh, I will say... Um, because the characters never really age. I mean, they go through stories. But, yeah, it's kind of hard. You know, fifty oh. years of history is just like, well, I'm the same character I was. Oh, well, instead of fifty years, they say it's like two years or five years. But that's bullshit. Well, yeah, but you <laughs> the don't time look too close. Is like goes at like a tenth the speed. That's right. Normal. Time. That's right. That's how they make it work. Because when DC has a crisis, mm -hmm. you know, they reset everything. Marvel's never had a crisis. <laughs> but like civilization changes around them. Yes. Like, how do they account for that? They just remember it a little differently. Oh. Or they go like, that was a long time ago, you guys. That was like four years ago. They don't even say the number. They, I think that's where the editor comes in. He goes yeah. like, oh, instead of paying, saying 30 years ago, let's say a long time ago <laughs> or a while ago. So the continuity directors just kind of make everything more vague. Yes. So you can't really pin anything down. <laughs> the only thing they do is update the wars. Like Frank Castle was a uh, nom vet. Right. Now he's not. Uh, <laughs> It's it's very much the beginnings of for me the cinemization of comics. Mm. Uh, Civil War is it reads very cinematically. It, it it tells a very concise movie esque story. Like you're I, looking at storyboards. Exactly. The uh, government is looking to enact a superhero registration act. Ooh. Um, a law that forces all humans with superpowers in the United States to be registered on a list. Yeah, and to register with the government. They are. To mm. declare who they are, uh, if their superheroes reveal their secret identities to the government, oh, and they need to have that. mandatory shield super training. When I was reading it, obviously I was very much anti-registration, because right. I'm like, right. I want to see these guys become corporate shills and government stooges, but right. at the same no, time, but the, like the shield training. Yeah, that sounds like it's a bonus. Yeah, I think that's awesome. That makes sense, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just practical. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You really and, get to study with Captain America, right? Cool. Yeah. And, well, you have to study with Captain. Right, exactly. But uh, also, it's kind of like. You mean some lunatic in a costume can't just jump out a window and right. save me from whatever they perceive to be a threat? That sounds right. awesome. There's this inciting incident. And what happens is there's a team called the New Warriors, who for the most part suck. I'm sorry to say it, but they do. And they're full of lame characters like Night Thrasher and <laughs> Nem oh, come on. And Namora and uh, Speedball. Night Thrasher's cool. Which one's Night Thrasher? Anyway? He's the ninja looking one. He's the black guy. Oh. On the team. I don't even see him. He's very not in that scene. He's the one yeah. that skateboards oh, and has awesome ninja weapons. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just awesome. He's batons. It looks like he like has a... sticks. I don't know if I'd call those awesome ninja weapons. I think I'd call those... You mean a screamer? Yeah. yeah. Is that is that is that a stick? Yeah, that's, that's a martial arts He has two stick. screamers. Oh. Uh, here, right here is my copy of Spawn Number 1 that I procured thanks to my grandma. <laughs> um, no longer with us, but she lived in Brooklyn. She had a little apartment 
uh, right in Brooklyn, and there was going to be a comic book convention. I read comics back in like the early '90s. I was going to say, was this one of those really early conventions? It was yeah. one of those like, episodes, like, yeah. Like the church basement. Like the church, yeah. in, fact, in fact, I believe it was in a church basement. <laughs> she saw that I read comics, and she was like, "You know, if you want me to get some comic books for you, I'm gonna. I can always go. It's at the church that I go to. You can. I'll just go to the basement and I'll pick up some comics for you." And I was like, I don't know, ten or eleven. And I'm like, okay, and I made this list of like Spawn comics. Like, first of all, it was incredibly popular. Second of all, they were probably pretty expensive. And third of all, it was Spawn. Right. Like, my hundred-year-old Italian grandmother did not understand, nor was she going to, yeah. this concept. But you were she ten. Was, I was she ten. She looked through it, right? No. She bought them. So no, she just matter. threw them in a grocery bag, yeah. put that on top of her wheel cart thing full of her groceries. <laughs> Who's this man that looks like a sausage? Yeah. And then, uh, and then, and then... The next time we went to Brooklyn, she was like, here you go. I'm like, oh my god. She actually delivered the goods. And my parents were like, why did you make your grandmother get these? What the hell's wrong with you? I'm I that. really thought that um, with a name like Emma Frost, she would have some sort of cold power. Right. Sort of ice power. No, but interestingly enough, Emma Frost does, when she's a bad guy, use her psychic powers to take over the body of Iceman. And she manages to make him more powerful than he's ever been, ever. Like, oh. she's like, you know, you could freeze the molecules in someone's organs or in the <laughs> moisture in the air. And, like, she just winds up making him incredibly overpowered. And then when she leaves his mind, he feels like a putz because he's like, I've been Iceman forever and I don't even know half the things that I can, do. can do. You were in my brain for like 20 minutes and you completely owned me. I was, it's so sad. It's such basic physics, though. Water right, like, is everywhere. Water is everywhere. Well, you maybe, can freeze it. He doesn't know anything about physics. Well, I mean, he lives in a but school. he's a really bad student. <laughs> yeah. You he should be held back. I think he actually was he like, play, ah. He has to learn in like, classes with the, with the kid that blinks channels with his eyes. A character is just <laughs> in the movies. You're out a way to fix her. I, you know what? I would feel better. I, I would just feel better if I saw her myself. Why we went to Genosha and we talked to her. <laughs> Now, why does Xavier just like wipe her mind or something? Well, because a he's kind of too moral for that. He's oh. like, you know, if I wipe your mind, like, what are you? You know, it's my. I might as well just kill you. Well, just the parts about what she did. Right, but I'm not sure he has that much control over it. He will also he could freeze people so that they. That's also the movie, oh, but oh. <laughs> uh, but also she has reality altering powers. So like. Right. She could change the whole world if she felt felt threatened. So. I mean, she also got things changed on her once, and she freaked yeah, out and killed the, the Avengers. Exactly. I imagine that trying to wipe her mind again. Yeah. yeah. Who the hell knows what she'll do? It's like you did this to me again. Yeah. That's it. You're done. Yeah, Everyone's dead. I was a lizard. <laughs> so uh, a lizard. This isn't Spider Man. No, why exactly. Don't get, why don't they get Doctor Strange? Like Doctor Strange, like I can't fix her. Well, not fix it. She's just like train well, because her. he's it, like, I okay. can't use the magics on her. But like, why don't you just fucking talk to her? Like she's, you're a magician. Like, she's crazy. Yeah. Like she's gone insane. You can't magic your way out of no, being crazy. No, that's what I'm saying. Don't use magic. Just be. Just empathize with her well, as yes. a person who controls the magic. Oh, just, I see. Just be a goddamn person. Okay. None of them can do that. <laughs> the new Avengers were in Japan. They were trying to rescue their colleague Echo, who is a deaf female superhero who has like ninja powers. She's not really that super in as much as she just don't have powers. No, well, like, well, to a normal person, a ninja has powers. The power like, of like stamina and agility. That's not power. Da Daredevil has heightened senses because he was blind. Yeah, yeah no, but it's and now day. she's deaf, so she has heightened things. Yeah, but it's not the same way because Daredevil gets his powers from like radioactive yeah, waste. Yeah, he has, has like, like a. She's just also deaf, yeah. but she's also a Daredevil character. Okay. Um, so that's the connection. Ben Grimm and Alicia broke up. And then Lija came in and like replaced her. What did she do with her? I don't know. I don't remember if if Alicia just moved away <laughs> and Lija just took advantage of that situation, or if the scrolls took her. The Human Torch winds up hooking up with and sleeping with the scroll version of Alicia Masters, oh. much to the chagrin of Ben Grimm, because he doesn't know that she's a scroll. And then she turns out to be a scroll, and he's like, "What? You tricked me! I didn't know I was banging a scroll." She's like, "Does it matter?" And he's like. I guess not. <laughs> not wanting to sound racist, he was like, "Oh no, I'm totally cool with it." <laughs> and then she lays an egg, and it's what? really stupid. There's kind of like no. this. I don't really know what the physiology oh of a scroll is, but she lays an egg, and you're like, "Uh oh." And he's like, "Oh no, I'm gonna be a dad, kind of." Except no. <laughs> and it becomes this whole story for the Fantastic Four. They're like chickens, and they just lay eggs, and they aren't right. Like he didn't fertilize it, yeah. so who knows? And you can't fertilize it because you're not a fucking scroll. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. The reason why Jeff Loeb is so controversial is because while he's written a bunch of really cool stuff, 
He's also written some real bad stuff. Mm. All right, the worst being the worst being Ultimatum. Easily Ultimatum. Ultimatum is like a big crossover that kind of like resets the Ultimate Universe for Marvel. Okay. Magneto's pissed, so he uses he, he uses his Magneto powers to shift the tides of the ocean by like moving the plates of the earth or some nonsense. I was going to say, he doesn't have control over water. No. Water's not magnetic. No, no but he moves the plates of the earth and creates okay. a tidal wave that, that destroys New York. I think mm. I think the fact that he can move tectonic plates yeah, means he's a bullshit. It means he's a fucking god. I'm sorry. Yeah, OP. That's too far. Yeah. He's OP. Wolverine with adamantium. Apparently they had to specify this. Because right. that back then, Magneto had taken Wolverine's adamantium off of his bones. <laughs> Whoa. Because in a story meeting with uh, Peter David, I believe, they were talking about, oh, and then, and then Wolverine's going to come and he's going to attack Magneto. And Peter David goes, you know, fire Magneto. I just rip his adamantium right out of his right out of his body. You know, problem solved. Why is Wolverine a problem? Apparently, in, until the nineties, no one had thought about that. <laughs> and they went, "Oh, that's an awesome idea." And he went, uh. "No, that's a terrible idea. He would die. His bones are made of adamantium." And he said, "But what if they weren't? What if they were just laced with adamantium?" And he's like, "But, but they're not." And they're like, "But what if they were?" And he's like, "But they aren't." And they're like, "But what if they were?" <laughs> and he's like, well, then he wouldn't have claws, because his claws are adamantium. They're like, well, what if he had bone claws? Is that where bone claws came from? And, they, and he was like, but they aren't. They're thin. They come out of his forearms. He wouldn't have room for bones. And they were like, bunch of CP. We're, we're going to handle this. <laughs> and indeed, they did that. Uh, apparently, the adamantium in his system was what was keeping the animalistic nature of Wolverine at bay, and it kept him from oh. regressing, so he was becoming more of a hulkish monster. So dumb. That sounds pretty it was dumb. Awful, really dumb. And everyone was just like, "When is he going to get his adamantium back?" Right. And they pushed it like it was almost like every time someone asked them, they pushed it back a year. Venom's costume. Okay, so Spider-Man in 1984 had to go to a faraway planet and fight villains with his friends in a book called Secret Wars. Okay. It was a really dumb. <laughs> I'm not going to know about them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, dumb joke. No, but it's. <laughs> Uh, so Secret Wars was dumb, and who cares? But the only thing that matters, it really is, like, it was 12 issues, everyone died in it. But the only thing that matters in Secret Wars is that Spider-Man got a new costume. It also, like, took control of his body and, like, took him places. Like, it it knew he was Spider-Man, and it, like, became familiar with those customs. So, like, the co like when Peter would fall asleep, the costume would, like, get on him and then just be Spider-Man. <laughs> And then he didn't know. You no, know, and he'd wake up and he'd be like, I'm exhausted. <laughs> it was more like the costume developed an attachment to him, like, emotionally. The okay. costume was, like, in love with him. Right. It was like, I want to be with you forever. So, like, I'll attach myself to you. Well, somebody else made for life. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And Spider-Man's like, ew, no. And it's, like, resentful. And, <laughs> and it gets it's angry. Like well, jilted love. Okay. It's, yeah. it's a girlfriend. It's yeah. a girlfriend he doesn't yeah. want. Yeah, it's yeah, just, it's, it's actually an allegory disturbing. for every ex that you've ever had. <laughs> it's this yep. cruel, like draining that. thing. Yeah, well, that's the thing. They latch you and don't let Go, yeah, that's that's really more because it won't go. Venom away. doesn't drain Every you. Every girlfriend later. you've ever had has been like that, right? Every single one. Every one. The image creators have really very little experience writing and telling a story. Um, so they break off from Marvel and DC and they create image. And they're like, let's make this shared universe, but the big key factor of image is that we all own our characters. Mm -hmm. So if we don't like what's happening with our characters, we can take them and do something else with them. But let's also make our universe interconnected so everything hinges on each other. Yeah, that seems like the worst idea. Well, the first part of that idea was great. Like, yeah. I create a character and I own that character. Yes. Yeah. But then the fact that they all have to rely upon each other? Yeah. Well, that, that part doesn't seems... follow Oh, and it, it's going to be a huge And problem. it fell apart almost immediately. <laughs> like, Spawn, for example, he gets killed by his friend and partner, who is another character from a book called Youngblood which was created and drawn by Rob Liefeld. Who you may have heard that name before, because yeah. he's... Okay, good. Because <laughs> Rob Liefeld is fucking awful. And it's he's like he's like the internet comic book whipping boy. Like Everyone loves to talk trash about Rob Liefeld. He's actually the guy who helped create Deadpool, and oh. X-Force, and Cable, and like all of those ancillary X-Men characters that are so popular today, Rob Liefeld helped create. Like, he's... He is deserved of some credit, okay. um, but he uh, so he created Chapel, and then Todd McFarlane and Rob Liefeld had a big fucking falling out, and so Rob Liefeld's like, I'm gonna take my young blood characters, I'm gonna go, just like I can, 
This is right. what legally I have every president to do so. Take my toys and I'm leaving. Yeah, and he did, literally, because Todd McFarlane then became a toy manufacturer, and then he took his toys and he, like, left comics entirely. And immediately, Jason Todd is a different Robin. Mm -hmm. Like, that was kind of the cool part about Jason Todd That's as Robin. Point. Yeah, they were like, well, they... We do whatever we want. Pre-crisis, they were like, we gotta make him as much like Dick Grayson as possible. We gotta... He's a goody two-shoes, he, he follows the rules, and he's helpful, and he's just, you know, Batman's little target. Right. Uh, but this is the 80s. But this is the 80s. It's post-crisis world. We, anything can happen. And we got punks in the 80s. Yeah. So post-crisis Robin, Jason Todd's kind of a dick, and, and readers are not interested. <laughs> really? They are like, this is not... he's not old Robin? Because he's not old Robin. Yeah. So Batman and Robin... Uh, go on this merry adventure where they're tracking down Joker's goons and they're looking for Jason Todd's mom. The Joker is at that same camp and he leverages Sheila Haywood to help him orchestrate his evil schemes. Like, she puts him in touch with a bunch of people who are leaders in that region um, because the Joker knows that she used to perform abortions illegally in Gotham and her license was revoked. Oh. 80s, this is a huge fucking deal in the so, 80s. Uh, the Illuminati is a team of each representative of their respective corners of the Marvel Universe. So, like, Iron Man, Reed Richards, Professor X, Black Bolt, uh, Namor... Whoa, 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 who's Black Bolt? Black Bolt is the king of the Inhumans. Oh. He's not a mutant, nor is he a superhero. He is an Inhuman. And the Inhumans are, like, this race of people with powers that were put on Earth using... The Kree's power and the Terrigian mists. So he he's from doesn't have their blood. People. No, he has, or a he has skeleton. Well, he has he's a he's a guy, but he doesn't. He never like went to school and had parents. Like he's just. Where does he live? So he he's lives. Belly the Inhumans. Live. He lives with the Inhumans in their in their city. Oh. Uh, the I bought Spawn from issue one to issue fifty, and then I thought. I think this is getting to be kind of bullshit. Let me buy the next ten issues and see if I'm right. I'll just make sure. Yeah. Ten issues later, I went, I'm, I'm, I think it's going somewhere. Another ten issues later, I went, this is not going anywhere. <laughs> I stopped reading, and then I remember reading that issue 100 was going to come out, and it was going to change everything. Because when McFarlane came out with Spawn, he said, I have 100 issues planned, and once that's done, Spawn is over. Right. Anyway, anyway does he have to breathe? Yeah, they're all, I mean, like, they look like people, they have skeletons, and they wear clothes, but they also are not regular people. Do the other people have names? Yeah. Like, they his just, wife is Medusa. They just look like people, they're not people. Yeah. They're like aliens. His wife, right. like wife Superman is Medusa. Looks like Medusa. Person, I'm guessing that's, like, the, the, the name that her, she... Her hair can become... Snakes? Alive. You know, we're way off track here. Yeah. No, Let's no, get no, back I, to Civil War. Medusa. She, her hair can come alive. That's totally fine. Yeah. Does she like, turn that's what stone? she's called no. all the time. Yeah. All right. So there is no other name for her. No. But Black Bolt has to have a different name. Black and Black to Black I think it's, like, a royal Black title, but yeah. It doesn't matter. Yes, Medusa's not a royal person, so she is. She is. She's, she's, the, she's the queen of the Inhumans. Oh. He's, she's his wife. Well, I guess the females in their race don't get fancy names. Like right. I mean, for all I know, she does have a name, and I'm pissing off some the oh, one or two I'm Inhuman sure. fans out there. <laughs> so they steal a Quinjet from Tony Stark, and they fly down to the Savage Land, where the Mighty Avengers intercept them, because they're like, we know where the spacecraft is going. So both teams get there, Ooh. and then the spacecraft opens up, and it's the people who are there, but from in their 70s outfits. <laughs> As if to imply what? that everyone who is there have always been Skrulls since the 70s. Since the 70s? Yeah. It, it's it's a ruse time. created by the Skrulls to make them all doubt each other. Oh. So then all the superheroes basically fight their Skrull counterparts. <laughs> okay. And that puts all the superheroes off the table for a little while. So there's just a big fight going on in the Savage Land. People who are reading this have wishful thinking because everybody has had something happen to their favorite character at some point by uh, this point. Right. That they'd love to see pulled back. Like Beast, for example, Hank McCoy. Uh, you know, when he was first created in the 60s, like he was just a dude. He just looked, he was just a big guy. Then he cr tries to create the serum that's going to like reverse his mutation and winds up exacerbating it, making him in into a blue beast man. Right. Later on, when Joss Whedon took over the Avengers, <laughs> they changed Beast's design and made him look more like a cat man. Mm -hmm. And it was a really dumb design that nobody quite liked. Actually, you know what? I think Grant Morrison might have been behind that change. And then Whedon kept it going. But anyway, he's a cat man now. And like he's a little bit more like regressed in his animalistic nature. So now he's like, oh, I might eat you. And it's, you're like, what? So then Beast shows up, and he looks like Beast 
from the fucking <laughs> 80s, and you're like, yay! <laughs> Maybe it's all bullshit! Spoilers, it's not. Uh, Catman Beast is the real Beast. Damn. Incidentally, in the most recent continuity, um, Beast has another metamorphosis. Now he looks like a blue ape man. So he actually looks worse than he did when he was a cat. They were like, don't worry, Beast's gonna change. And you're like, oh, mm. thank God, maybe he'll go back. Nope, worse. Worse. No, he's worse. new now. Dumber. He's better. Dude. Tommy Elliott was a rich, young boy like Bruce Wayne. His parents got into a car accident when he was friends with Bruce. And they brought both parents to Thomas Wayne, Bruce Wayne's father, who is a brilliant surgeon, to save them. And the dad died, but the mother survived. And Batman's like, you're blaming... Me, because I promised you my dad would help, and he only saved one of your parents? And he's like, no, I'm blaming you because he saved one of them. You were so rich, and you were so happy, and all I wanted was for my parents to die so I could inherit their fortune. What? And I had to wait for my mom to die of cancer for me to inherit all their money. Oh my God. And I knew I'd vow revenge upon you. For, for one day becoming a millionaire. Yeah, for you having, for your dad saving my parents. So this is the fucking good son. Yeah. Where it's just like, <laughs> no, this eight-year-old's just a demon. Yeah, Sorry. exactly. He's evil and bad. Just a bastard. That's there had a to be the ending. Yeah. So here's, well. But, but it's I, not even over. It's not even over yet. I just cheated. Everyone. Because Batman <sighs> finds out that, in fact, there was a real mastermind to the whole thing. It was the Riddler. The Riddler got brain cancer. And so he went to Tommy Elliot for help. Okay. Tommy Elliot was like, I'm not helping you. You're the fucking Riddler. And he's like, but I can help you with, like, you know, uh, with other things and blah, blah, blah. So, I like, you get your revenge. Yeah. But, and he's, like, in the jungle now? Venom like, cryogenically freezes Spider Man and then flies him via a charter plane to a tropical island to fight him. Okay. Can I ask a question about um, the flight safety and not having to check certain things where it's like, <laughs> it's, hi, I'd like to charter a plane. All right, do you have any baggage? Well, I have this about six foot long metal trunk with a frozen guy inside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But don't worry, I have a permit. Well, that's the thing. He doesn't even, the, the, the cryogenics room freezes Spider-Man and then he can just pick up Spider-Man. So he doesn't oh. even, a, he he just, even need a box. He just thaws out naturally. Yeah, he just wakes up eventually. That's yeah. not how that works. All power. You can freeze frogs and they'll come back. Yeah, more or less all super. freeze a bee. Yeah. It's a little piece of floss around the midsection, and then when it wakes up, you have a bee on leash. Is that a thing? Have yes. you done that? I just saw that. I tried, but it kept waking up. It kept waking up. It kept waking up. How many times were you stung by this, <laughs> this abused bee? How many bees She's did you go through on well, this? That's what I want to know. <laughs> just picture and you just you sting you and you just Damn it! All right. Another one from the jar. Give me another bee. From the jar. Give me another bee. Hand me another bee. <laughs> Robin sees his mom talking to the Joker. Oh. So he's like, oh my god. She must be being coerced. Like, she must be in trouble. Uh -huh. So I'll just tell her I'm Robin, right? Right. This woman I've just met, and then I'll tell her that I can protect her from the Joker. Because I know Batman. Cause yeah, because I'm, I'm Robin, and I'm I know Batman. Batman. Yeah. yeah. So she betrays him to the Joker. <laughs> and Wait. She betrays her newly discovered son, son. Yep. To, the to, the Joker. to the Joker. Wait, so that she doesn't get ousted as performing abortion? Yes. That's dumb. I know. It's horrible. It's 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 so, so she's horrible. like a bad person. She's a really bad person. That's that's unforgivable. It's I'm unforgivable. Sorry. So Joker's like, thanks a lot. Then he takes out a crowbar and he beats Jason Todd senseless with it. Wait, he's right there in the room with him? Yeah. I mean, if I don't she know. sells him out to the Joker, I imagine it's just like, oh, yeah, you're my son and all this, and then, like, she pulls back a curtain. Yes, Joker that's almost in. exactly oh, how it turns okay. out. I didn't even read it. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly how it turns out. At that point, she's like, no, my son! No. She, really? The fucking panel like, sequence is amazing. Holy she, fuck. She watches, then she winces, and then she lights a cigarette. Oh, she sucks. She's cold. Because she's really afraid of being outed. Right. As, a... as have we performed abortions. Yes. Like, they'll come get me. And... Yeah, they'll come you... get me in Ethiopia. The, the... What is revealed is uh, Robin, with his last ounce of strength... Ooh, yeah, he's fucking bludgeoned. Yeah. He leaps in the way of the bomb. Kaboom! Batman ap appears on the scene, he's like, oh my god. And then the issue ends. And then DC Comics put out in that issue a thing that says, should Robin live or die? 
call now one nine hundred blah like whatever the number was, and vote. And the the numbers were really close, but in the end, they voted for Robin to die. Wow. And in fact, the the That's fucking cold man. I know the the, the, the cold. Yeah, uh, you got Scarlet Witch, you got Hawkeye, She Hulk, Captain Britain, Captain America, Captain Britain. Oh yeah, <laughs> this is the super soldier super soldier uh, version for, for Britain that was always Captain America. For Captain like, America they made a ton of different, Britain, but from England. There was like Captain Italy and Captain France. There were no other characters like that. This is not the regular Captain Britain. Maybe it's Ultimate <laughs> Avengers I'm thinking. This isn't like, even the regular Captain like, Britain. All right, no. Ultimate Avengers, there are other captains because I just think remember them like sharing. Oh, well, this is not the shit. Ultimate. All right, it's not, but I, re- oh, yeah. I just remember there. All right, well, I didn't read that, so I don't know what you're talking about. So who has Hulk? Fight. Does Hulk? Hulk is in space. <laughs> oh. The Illuminati launched the Hulk into space because he had another mindless rampage and destroyed uh, Las Vegas. Mm. So they sent him into space and they put him on a rocket and the rocket was supposed to be like a trans-dimensional rocket that takes him through a wormhole and takes him to like an uninhabited planet lush with greenery that he could eat. Mm. So he could just stay there and not hurt anybody. Plants. So Hulk smashes all the controls and he goes off course and he lands on a war world where the whole planet is like gladiator. And, and this is Planet run, Hulk. Yeah, and this is Planet Hulk. Fair. Cool. I will say this. I never read Planet Hulk. Mm. I watched Planet Hulk. Oh, do, that fucking DVD sucks. Marvel Animation needs That's to get their point. shit together. It, it I don't know terrible. why Marvel Animation cannot get their shit together, especially now that they're part of D, they're, they're part of Disney. It was like an after school oh, it was cartoon so show bad. that lasted for an hour and a half. So that bad. Sucks. It's. Ugh. By yeah. the way, this is also the story that kind of establishes the Venom reluctantly kills people. Like, he's like, I, I have to kill you be- because you're part of a greater purpose, and that purpose is me killing Spider-Man. Okay. And that's what eventually led to making Venom into the lethal protector. And, yeah, for a good, like, five years, maybe, uh, they had, you know, regular Venom miniseries, where Venom would, like, fight the Juggernaut, or he would, like... And it was a mess. It was so terrible. Le- people like Lethal Protector. That was the okay. first one... And probably because Mark Bagley drew it and Spider-Man appears in it. And I guess people really like Venom the Mad... Uh, I think it's Venom the Madness. I don't remember. But there's one where it's like, it glows in the dark. You hold the cover up to the light and then it fucking glows in the, in the dark. It glows green. I think I have that issue somewhere over there. very 90s. It's, yeah. it's a really nice kitschy thing, but then you're just like, all right, I'm in the dark with this comic. Yeah, shit. Yeah. I can only look at the cover. I can't read it. Well, so pra- no who cares whatsoever. if it's practical? It's just it's just awesome. Well, yeah. it's when you go to bed. You know, you can see your cover on the nightstand. Yeah, you're yeah. like, oh, there's, me. there's yeah. Venom protecting me. He's the lethal <laughs> protector. protector of my bedroom. <laughs> exactly. Um, it used to be, in comics, only four people stayed dead. Uncle Ben... Gwen Stacy, Jason Todd, and Bucky, Captain America sidekick. Yep. Two out of four. Yeah. Have Gwen Stacy. Gwen Stacy's still, still dead. dead. And, and Uncle, Uncle ben, ben is still dead. Thank fucking God. <laughs> um, but yeah, Bucky's back, and in a Peter, great I'm story. back, and I'm pissed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm evil now. <laughs> you gotta fight me. <laughs> so reason. With great power comes great pain, bitch. <laughs> that would be. Uh, so, don't. You know what? I'm gonna have to cut this out because Marvel might do it. I remember reading this weird novel. It was a Spider-Man novel. Oh, God. Yeah. So, Spider-Man novel? Novel. They, like, they did that for a little while, yeah. yeah. And um, nice. Venom was in it. And he meets these three punks in a subway sewer. And I think he eats them. Mm. Venom eats them? In the comics, Venom does threaten to eat Spider-Man's brains and drink his marrow. Like, it's very graphic. Well, yeah. But he never does. Well, right. all I mean, no one's threatened well, all kinds of horrible things. You can't things. eat Spider-Man's brains and drink his marrow because he's the hero. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, He's not going to kill Spider-Man. Gonna but he's going to do that to random but someone was yeah. like, brothers. wait, why doesn't Venom ever actually eat, eat anybody? He keeps I'm talking about see it. that shit since he said that he's yeah. going to eat That's someone. That's why he's writing he's Spider-Man Spider-Man Jones. Jones. He's got the mouth. Yeah. Uh, Eddie Brock Venom never ate anybody. <laughs> he beat people to death. He suffocated them with, with his webbing. Okay. Uh, but he never ate anything. He never crossed that line. No. For a very brief period of time, they had talking action figures. And, of course, the limitations of the toys at the time. You had the sweet plastic action figure with the articulation and everything. <clears throat> and then you plugged a plastic box on their back, yeah. like they're wearing a proton pack. <laughs> Venoms were, die, Spider-Man, 
Rawr, and I'm going to eat your brains. <laughs> and it like said it on the, and it said it on the fucking package. Like the package was like him going like I'm gonna eat your brains. <laughs> like fucking <laughs> like, 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 like a selling point. Yeah. So the Avengers uh, are hanging out. They're actually talking about who'd you rather. I think they're having a game of who'd you rather. <laughs> And okay. a former Avenger who had just died named Jack of Hearts, who I will not get into right now. Okay. He sucks, and he was killed, and rightfully so. <laughs> and so his zombified corpse shambles up to the mansion. Now, Jack of Hearts died saving Ant-Man's daughter. Now, not Ant-Man we were just talking about, the other Ant-Man. There's two Ant-Mans. There's one Ant-Man that's Hank Pym. He invented Pym particles. He can get himself small and big. Right, and he can the real Ant-Man. That's the real Ant-Man. He can also yeah. make himself big and call himself Giant Man. At this point, he's Yellow Jacket. Okay. Ant-Man, Scott Lang, is just a regular dude who has a helmet and he can, like, talk to ants. I think he can also shrink, but it doesn't matter. So Ant-Man's daughter is rescued by Jack of Hearts, but in the process, Jack of Hearts dies. Jack of Hearts shows up at the mansion door, zombified and gross. Scott Lang, a.k.a. Ant-Man at this point, uh, runs over to him and he's like, I saw you die, what happened? And then he says, I'm sorry, and explodes, blows up the mansion, and kills Scott Lang. Oh, fuck. Wow. So you've, you've just killed, you've re-killed Jack of Hearts, and you've killed Scott Lang. This is like the beginning of the book? It's the beginning, this is how the book opens. Ryan Michael Bendis knows how to start a wow. story. So he's like, ding dong, who's two the Ant-Man's door? Is too confusing. Death. Yep, one, one Ant-Man's, Ant-Man's gone. gone. We got one Ant-Man again. That's right. The Batman Hush by Jeff Loeb and Jim Lee. A silly, ridiculous ride. Lots of cool moments. Awesome visuals. And if yeah. you're only reading it month to month, it doesn't... You know what? That last chapter still completely falls apart. Because <laughs> it's all revealed in yeah. one issue at the end. Yeah. And you're like, what the fuck? What? And they very like very shoddily explain everyone's in- involvement. Like, Batman yeah. asks them. He's like, okay, so... Why was Poison Ivy involved? And they're like, the money. And they're like, why was uh, the Joker involved? He loved the Jason Todd gag. Uh, why was the Clayface involved? It was the role of a lifetime. They're explaining oh everything? Yeah. And, oh, but they're all well, crappy you, ones Because you want to. Because you're like, why would the Joker become a pawn yeah. There's no this yeah. fuckhead? I actually was really disappointed that the I Joker didn't go, go, this is bullshit. And, yeah. th- and turn the whole damn thing on its Yeah, that's because what he would have done. What? He doesn't want Batman to die. Yeah. Or if he does, he's going to kill him. Not yeah, he's not going to be part of somebody else's stupid not ass Not some retcon bullshit non-character. Really dumb. Yeah. That's super dumb. Yeah. No, what would have happened is he, he would have gone along with it and then fucked over everyone else and killed Batman yeah, on I, I was expecting at the end when Hush shows up and he's like, I'm going to defeat you, for Joker to come up behind him and go like, who fucks with me? <laughs> oh, that would have been amazing. And they go, toodaloo, Batman! The fucking linchpin that ties everything and makes it possible. Yeah. On such, such flimsy. Yeah. Yeah. Such. Because it's so bad. Red bear. Yeah. I came up with such a badass Thief. idea. Yeah. But it's like no. That's maybe you should have fucking happy. taken it to the drawing board one or two more times. Yeah. Maybe you should have talked to someone else and be like, hey, what do you, do you think of this? What do you think? Is it good? And someone's like, just like, no. Why don't you change a few things? Yeah. You know what would have been cool if it had just been the Riddler the whole time. Yeah. Like if it had just been a Riddler story. Yeah. With the Riddlers pulling the strings. That would have been really cool. He's been around for a long time. His name's Goliath. He's like Ant Man, but if he was black. And he worked with Hank Pym. Okay. And he makes himself big. And he is anti-registration. Oh. And he uh, tries to fight Thor. And Thor shoots a hole through his chest with lightning. Holy crap. Yeah. Why it's... is Thor pro-registration? Because it's not really care? Thor. Uh... It's a clone of Thor that Iron Man and Reed Richards made. Oh, shit. Yeah. Then he says, you are all going down. Yeah. Should have been ding, ding, round two, motherfucker. Yeah. Wow. Kadoosh. Writing in this book is pretty fucking bad. And I say that because the dialogue is just so one-dimensional. It's so utilitarian. No one is interesting or unique in their speech. Mm. Uh, it, it's why I don't really, really like it. It sounds like the pro-registration people just really took things way too far. That's the thing. Like, if they had just calmed down yeah. a little bit yeah. and not done all that crazy supervillain yeah. type stuff, sounds like a it might have worked out better. Right. <laughs> but, like, Black. Captain America is also like, we have to fight them! Okay. It's bullshit! And they're like, holy shit, Cap. 
There's well, also. I mean, think about this. He fought the Nazis. He's right. and the funny thing is, it's a really old battle for him. Everybody who has a problem with what Captain America's doing keeps saying to him, "It's not 1945 anymore." Mm-hmm. Everyone always say, like three. Like, Stop saying that. Yeah, he doesn't say that, but I did when I was reading yeah. it because I like the fourth character was like, you know, it's not 1945 anymore. It's like. Oh my god! Could you get a new way to say it, Millar? <laughs> All of this is not a coincidence. Right, someone set this up. Someone set up the worst day in Avengers history right. and sought to take the Avengers off the playing field. And right. it's the Kree? No, the Kree are the just Kree are pawns. Just they, yeah. The Kree up here, Hawkeye shows up and he's got his like explosive arrows and shit, right. and he's laying siege to some Kree, but then his backpack full of arrows catches fire. And he knows he, he can't get it off in time. So he grabs a Kree, he launches its jetpack, and he and the Kree launch into a Kree ship and blow the fuck up. Hawkeye's dead off the table. What? Uh, what, he can't get him off his back? It actually spawned the famous not like this quote. People made fun of Bendis and this book forever because when he notices that the backpack's on fire, he goes, not like this, not like this. And then he grabs the Kree and goes, like this, yeah. And then <laughs> blows the fuck up because he's super badass and cool. Right. Hawkeye is not to be seen again for a long well, he time. he blew up. Because he blew the fuck up. He's dead. Doctor Strange shows up and he's like, you fucked up everything! <laughs> and they're like, why? Who's this green, like, ghost guy? That's Radioactive Man. And not... <laughs> really? Not, not radioactive, radioactive Man, man <laughs> from The Simpsons, but I think he's the Radioactive Man. Huh. What happens at the end of this is, uh, Cap gains the upper hand and he starts beating the shit out of Iron Man and then 9-11 tackles him. And what I mean by that is, <laughs> it's 2005, it's four years after 9-11, and Captain America is tackled by a paramedic a fireman, a policeman, and a citizen. And uh-huh. they're all in midtown Manhattan, and they stop him from killing Iron Man or f- beating the shit out of Iron Man. And when he's like, I don't want to hurt you, they're like, hurt us? What are you, crazy? You've ruined everything, and you're not a representative of us. And I'm like, this is the most heavy-handed bullshit I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah. It's so... What's a cop shoot awesome. him? <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. See ya. Take care. And your name? Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm Sal. <laughs> I'm Ethan. And I'm Ben. Bye. <laughs> I am Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Ben. Anyway, for Little House Online, I am Sal. I'm uh, Ethan. I'm Ben. And let's do that. <laughs> no, it's you know what? Fuck it. Alright. Hey, you win a little house no prize! <laughs> <laughs> oh figure. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Fuck me, right? Fuck me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The end. Hey, everybody, welcome to Back Issues. I am Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Ben. I am Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Ben. I am Sal. I'm Tiffany. I'm Danielle. Welcome to Back Issues. Today, we are talking about a big Ultimate Marvel Comics event ultimatum. Jeff Loeb's house cleaning, if you will, of the Ultimate Universe. Batman Death of the Family. This is literally just a Clint Eastwood cowboy movie ripoff, but with Wolverine instead. Batman Nightfall. Superior Spider-Man. I've got the whole run right here. Today we are talking about, topically I believe, mm. the Guardians of the Galaxy. Ooh. Infinity Gauntlet. Woo-hoo-hoo. Nice. We are doing, finally, some would say, <laughs> Siege by Olivier Coipel and Brian Michael Bendis. I want to do Justice League. All right. Since Ben would like to do Justice League and Ethan doesn't give a shit, we're doing Justice League Origin <laughs> Volume 1 from the New 52. It's the first time I've won anything. <laughs> like ever or on the show? I meant like it's not true. I, won't <laughs> I mean like it was an obvious lie that I told for no reason. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. like maybe we should mix it up. We'll still do a seminal moment in DC's history, but it'll still be very bat centric, so okay. it'll be kind of like in the spirit of Batman. And cool. that's why we've chosen Final Crisis. What is that? What do you got there? It's Final it's Final Crisis. Huh? DC's Get that out of here. I'm not doing that. Get in my house. I don't want to see that again. I'm, I'm sorry, it's just... What are we actually doing, Sal? We're doing Flashpoint. It also sucks. <laughs> <laughs> how uh, how long had the, the Ultimate Universe existed before they had to clean house on it? The Ultimate Universe was around probably about a decade before okay. they were like, okay, let's clean this up. We've talked a little bit about Marvel filing for bankruptcy and Marvel hitting yes. uh, a little bit of a slump. In fact, the whole comic book industry hitting a slump. Late 90s. Yeah, late 90s. Around 2000, Marvel brings in this guy named Bill Jemis, and he was like, this company should be doing gangbusters. You have some of the most recognizable characters in fiction. 
and you're finally her bankruptcy. It's inexplicable. And he's the guy who, like, called up a couple of his movie friends and got X-Men off the ground, fixed the Spider-Man movie uh, entanglement that was going on that kept Spider-Man from becoming a movie franchise. Right. And he and then... I, I would have been okay had that not happened. I was so excited for a Spider-Man movie when it came out in oh, 2002. Yeah. And yeah, I, you know what? Great. I loved it. And Spider-Man 2, I loved it even more. And then Spider-Man Spider 3. 3. And actually rewatching watching Spider-Man movies. Spider and you're like, when... they're not all that great either. Yeah, 2. 2 I, I like a lot, except like when he cries. Which is 80% of the movie. I also really don't get the romance plot. Where he's like, I want to be with you. No, but like, I yeah. can't be with you. And when she's like, hey, let's be together. And he's like, no. And then strangers are like, hey, are you dating somebody? He's like, maybe. No, it's not maybe. You, it's you, no. said, you, you said you're not dating. Yeah. Yeah. That's not a maybe. You're being a creep. That's a creeper thing to do. If a friend of yours told you that that was the relationship they were in, you'd be like, get out. Now, if you're DC and you want to revitalize your brand, what do you do? You have a crisis. And you right. reboot your universe. Yeah. And you make everybody younger and you start over again. This is so screwed up, I don't even know what to do. Let's just erase it. Yep. Like, Let's just start kind of over. Lazy? It is very lazy. It's Especially, the Etch Sketch world. Yeah. yeah. Well, no! anyway, let's redo this. Yeah. And uh, we've invalidated the stories that came before, and yeah. we can retell them, though, too, so yeah. that they're even more lame. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, you meant cooler, right? <laughs> uh, that's what they think. Yeah. Uh, in this story, uh, Batman has been active for about five or so years, but everything that you liked and remember about Batman also happened. Mm. So, Batman has the rich, full history that you remember and enjoy, but he's also got the youthful exuberance of a 32-year-old. Well, he was busy in five years. Yeah, yeah, he had five Robins in five years, which is pretty effing offensive when you think about <laughs> just how... Uh, it's a lousy oh, track record. Yeah. yeah. I think they actually wound up kind of fudging it, so like maybe some of them weren't Robins, but... We know. <laughs> We're on to you, Batman. Um, the, uh, the Joker had been through the gamut. He had been kind of like, as you probably are familiar with, uh, he had had his origin kind of told by Alan Moore back in the 80s with Killing Joke. Uh, the Killing Joke was kind of like the definitive Joker story at the time. For Alan Moore, it was a Tuesday. It was just him <laughs> doing a Batman story. When you hear him talk about it now, when you hear about Alan Moore talk about comics now, he's just so, oh, well, it's all just bullshit, isn't it? <laughs> It's all just garbage, right? It's just a bunch of gun-toting, muscle-bound freaks trying to ward off homosexuality. Anyway, witches. So, you know, you, you kind of can't really take it for granted. Uh, but but he uh, he doesn't really like killing Joe. He's just like, well, I wrote it because I was under contract and they said you got to do one more Batman story, so I threw that out there. Oh, and just... it, yeah, but it wound up being like the definitive... He's like, yeah. so I thought I'd tell the Joker's definitive story, you know, the one-off. <laughs> This is one of my favorite books written by Mark Millar. Really? Which is saying a lot, because I don't like books written by Mark Millar. It's 50 years in the future from our present Marvel Universe. Okay. Um, there's a reference to the superhero holocaust, where all the superheroes died. By the way, not like a regimented Germanic <laughs> holocaust, but more of a uh, horrible event in the superhero's history. What? How would they all die? Uh, the idea was that all the supervillains kind of got together and then said, fuck these guys, and then just killed all the superheroes at once. Why don't they do that any time prior to Well, that? because the editorial department doesn't want to tell a big, sprawling, epic story about how everyone died. Wolverine has a wife and two kids, and he... Oh, wow. Uh, it, it's very, like, Clint Eastwood Western. It's very unforgiven. They run a farm. <sighs> That's exactly unforgiving. Yeah. Is it like a failing crappy farm? Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> uh, is he has he sworn off violence? Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> yes. In this, Wolverine has sworn off violence altogether, and he refuses to, as they say numerous times in the book, pop claws. Wolverine has not snicked oh. in fifty years. Do they since rest? No. Okay. It's adamantium. Plus, they're inside his body, which is which is all kinds of fluids. So it's, you know, yeah. if they were gonna rust, they would have already. They would. Yeah. Does he team up with a plucky young uh, person who idolizes him? He he teams up with a plucky old man who oh. idolizes him, Hawkeye, who in this is played by Nick Nolte. Um, or at least that's <laughs> oh, what they. Oh, he's that clear. artist. Yeah. Oh. No, no, no. That's Mike Deodato oh. Jr. He's like. You know who Norman Osborn looks like? Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah. So I'm just gonna just watch movies with Tommy Lee Jones, them pause them, and then make well Norman Osborn do those things. No, McNiven is like okay, so we're gonna try and infuse a little bit of Clint Eastwood into Wolverine, but like 
No, Hawkeye's just an old man with a big beard, and he okay. just he just looks like a crazy old man with white hair. That was just Nick Nolte to me. Mm -hmm. A lot of shit was going on in the 90s with DC, particularly Superman Dies, and then... Well, what do you do after Superman Dies? Right? What do you do? Uh, well, they didn't cancel any of his books. Right. Which I thought was kind of peculiar. As, right. like, an, a 10-year-old, I was <laughs> yeah. like... Well, how is this well, book still going? I'm not reading a book about grieving family members, and like you had an issue where like like his mom was sad, and his dad was sad, and Lois was sad, and Jimmy was sad, and Perry was sad, and the superheroes are sad. And what is Metropolis <laughs> going to do now that Superman's gone? And Lex like, Luthor's like, laughing. Yeah, well, actually, Lex Luthor had been dead, and his <laughs> his illegitimate clone, who was pretending to be his son, Fuck. was in place right oh, at Jesus. that point. And it turned out that it was actually Lex Luthor the entire time, and he had downloaded his consciousness into that clone body. Marvel now is kind of like Marvel's response to the New 52. Like DC saying, like, we're rebooting everything. New 52, everyone's young and pretty, and it doesn't make any sense. Okay, what are the criteria for Marvel now? Marvel now needs to be new and innovative and cool. Hot creators working on hot books, like Bendis is writing a, a, a new X-Men title. And uh, the guy who's writing Spider-Man and has been for the last five years is writing Spider-Man. So basically, it's a marketing, it's a yeah, it's a marketing yeah. scheme. It's, it means nothing. It's it's, it's literally all about the Marvel is, company and nothing about the Marvel stories. Well, the stories, well, the, their approach is the we want to have the stories. Yeah, we want the stories to be exciting, new. Uh, they want to change up the status quo a lot. Uh, For they, example, Peter Parker is replaced by, by Doctor Octopus. Dr. Iron Man, as it turns out, was like adopted by Howard Stark and his mom, and he was oh. actually like genetically engineered but to be super smart. Genetically engineered oh, to be super smart and stuff. Dumb. Do do they put Marvel Now on the cover, or are you just supposed to know it's Marvel? Oh yeah. Oh, how would you know unless it said Marvel I've Now? I've never on the seen cover. that before. Do they still do that, or is They're that They're still dumb? doing it? Marvel Now is still going on. Boom. I Marvel didn't Man. realize that that was Marvel special. Now. Are there any are there any Marvel titles that aren't Marvel now? No, everything is oh, Marvel everything. now. Anything that isn't Marvel now was canceled. Okay. <laughs> All right. This was the New Fifty Two debut of the Justice League. Okay. It so, wasn't the New Fifty Two debut with those characters, though, right? No. Okay. No, no, they've been in their own books since the New Fifty Two came out. Yes, just got but this just like, came out. Let's form a team. Mm -hmm. All well, right, it's actually so. a flashback book that tells the first time the Justice League was formed. Uh, oh, ever. So, so yeah. Justice League oh, okay. Zero. So, yeah, Justice League Zero, exactly. Alright, so we've got Batman. We've got Batman. We've got Superman. That's right. Uh, judging by the characters in the back, of course, we've got Flash, mm -hmm. Green Lantern, mm -hmm. Wonder, Wonder Woman. Woman. Nice totally. Uh, I thought I saw on the front cover Cyborg. Yes, Cyborg. Anyone do else? Have, do you have Blue Beetle in there? No, no Blue Beetle, just what about Cyborg. Fire and Ice. <laughs> This doesn't sound like the Justice League to me, Sal. <laughs> no, this is not the Justice League from 25 years ago. <laughs> or Aquaman, I forgot Aquaman. Aquaman, oh, Aquaman does Man. join up with Justice League, yeah. The but, line yeah. that I saw in there was, I'm not a fish, Aqua Fresh, that Green Lantern said. I was like, we are reviewing this. Genius. Genius-inspired writing from Jeff Johns. I'm not a fish. Aqua, Aqua Fresh. Fresh. I don't and know if Cyborg's on here, that kind of... I know. Yeah, but, well, but you just you'll notice that, and it's good again. You'll, but he's he's awesome and great because he's black, and it makes the team look a lot more inclusive now because they've got a woman and a black guy and a fish man. <laughs> so uh, anyway, my thought was, and I don't know if this is true or not, but I think like Marvel was thinking, let's try this franchise, this mm -hmm. whole franchise, rather than do a Groot movie or a Drax movie right, and then build no, it up. Let's well, just... they weren't even separate Oh no! All, right? Oh, there so is no way to do sense. a Groot movie. <laughs> Maybe a short CG movie. Yeah. I could see them like bumping with Pixar movies now. I could see them doing like a Rocket Raccoon Groot, like mm. silent kind of cartoon movie. Like five, ten minutes? Five minutes max. No, ten minutes I would not be able to stomach <laughs> Groot saying I am Groot. <laughs> For ten minutes. For ten goddamn minutes. Well, it's just, well, it's not just yeah. I mean, yeah. If he was fighting something, yeah. I guess I'd take that. Yeah. But yeah. let's instead go to a world pre New Fifty Two, but just before the New Fifty Two. This is uh. the main DC event that catalyzed the New Fifty Two. Can you guys see that for a second? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, at that. Does he have a ring? Okay. Yeah. Is that what gives him his power? No. No, he just keeps his suit in the ring. Flash what? Gets a suit in the ring? Yeah. How is that? How does it fit? So, Flash Boyd begins with Barry Allen running into his mom. And the reason why that's a surprise is because Barry Allen's mom has been dead since Barry Allen became the Flash. But he doesn't really think about the fact that, like, his mom's alive and everything's fucked. Anyway, the idea is, like, 
All right. You know what? Going chronologically doesn't work. <laughs> the idea is that one day, Barry Allen says, you know what? I miss my mom. This is bullshit. So he, goes, so he uses the cosmic treadmill, which is a, uh, a, a treadmill that... It's an actual treadmill. It's a real treadmill. It's a treadmill. Like yeah. A, like, like a, a real... For like, someone like to run on To something. exercise like on. Like a, a, yep, a moving like, mm-hmm. belt. Right. Belt. It's got the little arms. It's got yep. the little screen. Mm-hmm. But there's no screen. And the idea is... Because it's an older treadmill. And uh, <laughs> the idea is that, Is like, it motorized? The universe created a treadmill, well, it's, just like the ones made in, like, 1960s America. Yeah. And well, never before. Well, yeah. And, like, he uses it... He uses it to go back in time. How? Is this the first, like, major Thanos story? I mean, Thanos had appeared, and he'd been around since the 60s. Okay. But this was the first one where people went, Oh, cool! For the most part, he was like, Hey, look, it's Marvel's Dark Side. What you gonna do, Marvel's Dark Side? <laughs> And then he's like, I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get this fucking glove and I'm going to kill you. If you are watching these Marvel movies, then you know because some nerd has told you about the Infinity Gauntlet and yeah. the Infinity Gems, which they're calling the Infinity Stones in the movie. I guess because gems are no, silly. they call them gems. No, they call them stones in the movie. There are six Infinity Gems. Uh, power, mind, time, space, soul. And heart! <laughs> reality. 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 The most important one. Yeah. No. 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 I always no, forget. Power, power it's funny. Is the most, power is the most. No, no, that's should be. Power is the gem in Guardians of the Galaxy, right? And it appears the most powerful because of its own, you know, existence. But because of its use. But I mean, yeah. they're all equally powerful. You, uh, especially time. Holy uh, shit! Spe- time. I, they're all equal, especially one. Especially one. What is more than equal? Than <laughs> It's like I'll give you the bigger half. Today we don't have Ben. There's no Ben. No Ben. We are Benless. Which means we lost like 50% of our subscribers. <laughs> I, well, I mean, people come to see your opinions. They, you think I'm so? The, I'm, I'm basically their vessel. I'm I'm just saying what they think. Right. And then... I think that, But I think they mostly care about what you think. Well, they want to hear what they remember. Right. Yeah. And then they want to hear what... And they want to hear you validate what they think. But I never do. No, it's true, but they think maybe one day we'll get to you. Yeah. So, I mean, like, definitely people are like... I mean, in little ways, I think. That's true. Yeah, no, eventually you'll be like... And especially because you're so discerning. Yeah. You know, sometimes you'll be yeah. like... It means that's more, right. I think, when I say, you know what, it's fine, Ben. Yep. Like, or that's okay. <laughs> it's okay that it doesn't even bother me no. that they did that. And people are like, oh! Yeah. That must mean in, in comic bookies that it's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. So, you I know. I like to think so. <laughs> This is the next chapter right. in the ongoing saga of Marvel events that we've done on back issues. House of M, you lost the mutants with Civil War, you broke up the houses yeah. with uh, Disassembled, there's no Avengers. The new Avengers kind of came into being, but then Civil War kind of fucked that up. Right. And uh, now you've got uh, Secret Invasion made no one able to trust anybody. Right. And it put, uh, it gave, uh, what's his face? Norman Osborn. Norman Osborn. The keys to the family car. Yeah. Uh, he became the head of S.H.I.E.L.D., which is he changed into Hammer for no reason. And <laughs> uh, it sounds more hardcore. Yep. It's more aggressive. Yeah, and it introduced the idea of a supervillain Illuminati. Right. Uh, the Illuminati. That they call, swear to God, that wasn't me. No. They didn't call it that in that the books, can't, but oh, the okay. writers were like, oh, it's the Illuminati. Um, and I'm like, did, what did they call themselves in the books? Nothing. Oh. Because, I mean, they're just a bunch of egos. They're just like, right. they're not going to name them anything. No. When they first kicked it off, Mark Millar wrote the Ultimates Volume 1. I think you read Ultimates Volume 1. I, I did. Absolutely. And it was drawn by Brian Hitch. Really, really celebrated series. People love it. And in fact, even Ultimates Volume 2, people really enjoy. Then Jeff Loeb took over and wrote Ultimates Volume 3. I didn't read that one. That was a book plagued with trouble, but also bad. Mm. I was warned not to read that one. <laughs> yeah. By this guy. <laughs> uh, it is a mess. Quicksilver is really, really serious. He's Quicksilver always is angry. Yeah, that, is... That's the difference. Quicksilver, Quicksilver is, is like, he's, he's got something up his ass. Well, Peter David does an amazing job in some X book where he explains Quicksilver's demeanor. He, he basically recounts uh, being Quicksilver to being stuck behind a guy at the ATM who doesn't know how an ATM works. And you just keep waiting. And he keeps pushing buttons. And he gets them wrong and he has to start over again. He's like, that's what it's like for me every day. Every second of every day, I'm stuck behind people who don't know how to use an ATM. And I'm like, fair enough. Like he, he, so he why, can't like turn off being fast. being fast. No, he thinks fast. He runs fast. He well, eats how does he fast. Even hear people. 
Well, he slows himself like, down. Yeah. yeah. He has to slow himself down right. to bring us to our level. Right. But in the context of Ultimates Volume 3, Quicksilver is killed by Hawkeye's arrow, and Scarlet Witch is killed by the bullet shot by Ultron. At the end of that, it is revealed that Doctor Doom made Ultron kill Scarlet Witch and set off everything in motion. Magneto falls for it hook, line, and sinker and decides in Ultimatum, fuck the world and humanity. I'm gonna kill everybody. So Magneto uses his powers to affect the poles of the planet. Right. And changes the tides in the ocean. So he floods New York with a great tidal wave. Okay. Yeah, I remember calling bullshit on this. Yeah. Because Magneto but can't you gotta, be that powerful. But you gotta fucking... Yeah. And they call him... Like, they're like, you think you're a god. And like, well, you are, because you're well, fucking moving the earth. Yeah. Basically, one bad day. Right. And okay, the Joker's okay. point, because Joker kidnaps... Well, he paralyzes the Commissioner Gordon's daughter, mm -hmm. Barbara Gordon, a.k.a. Batgirl, mm -hmm. uh, to, and, and then kidnaps him and then puts him through... A like little roller coaster ride of pictures of his naked daughter lying writhing on the ground while paralysis is setting in, and uh, I think he's naked too. And they like, and he has like midget freaks like poking him with tasers and shit. It's uh -huh. really horrifying. <laughs> it's, and it's it's his way of kind of showing that like anyone can go completely insane if they're exposed to one really bad day, mm. just like he did. And, it's, and in fact, just like Batman did. Batman had a really bad day, and he's Batman. Joker right. had a really bad day, he's Joker. So right. naturally, if the commissioner has a really bad day, he'll become something horrible. <laughs> uh, he doesn't, because he's a person, <laughs> right. and he just gets over it. And he's like, well, a crazy person fucked up my life. That doesn't mean I'm crazy. Yeah. And, and since then, DC's been troubled with telling a really cool definitive Joker story. And some might tell you that there are some out there, mm -hmm. uh, but I say that they're all kind of lame. Mm, okay. Like, Joker is a bigger character than he has room for story. Like, the stories don't quite fit the character. I was gonna say, he seems kind of like hard to write for. Yeah, he's more of an Probably. elemental force than yeah. he is. Right. Like, I, there's, I don't remember what villain says it, but uh, he, he makes some comment like, you know, when villains want to freak each other out, they tell each other Joker stories. Right, yeah. Um, you know, it's so like how, a boogeyman. Yeah, so how can you yeah. live up to that and tell like a great Joker yeah, story? Yeah, yeah. You know, the Hulk has... There's a really half-hearted explanation that like maybe the gamma irradiation from being the Hulk made his brain... Cr made him crazy. Okay. And so, so as a result... it made him Hulk, and then it made him... Crazy. And then over time, like right. the longer he survived and the longer uh, he became the Hulk, the more crazy he got. And then the more rednecky he became, because he reasons in his gamma irradiated mind that the only person who can, as he puts it, keep up the pace with him sexually is his cousin Jennifer Walters, the She-Hulk. So he bangs the She-Hulk, and they have retarded cousin babies. Oh my! Did you notice in that panel? Batman's wearing the armband. The Superman. Oh, he's wearing the Superman armband. <laughs> Because yep. Superman's dead. Yep. Now, Superman hasn't come back yet. No! Superman can't help Batman. Right. And in fact, like, nobody can help anybody because, like, when Doomsday attacked, like, Wonder Woman wasn't there. Like, why? Like, why didn't Wonder Woman help? Well, so, like... No. I shouldn't know. They have armbands Doomsday bands destroyed the Justice League. Wow. The Justice League at that point was weak and lame, so... Well, like, that's why. She was destroyed. No, no, no. With the, the Justice, Justice League. League. She wasn't even on the Justice League at that point. Oh. It was like Booster Gold and Beetle and... Oh, God. Oh, oh that's right. Bloodwind and Well, she had been helping ice. Superman out for a while then, probably. I guess. She wasn't on the Justice League. No, so but, like, she's still Wonder regular. Woman. Like, she still exists. Yeah, she still, like, could... Well, she was probably on her island. In Mascara, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Busy. So nobody helps out. It's, it's sad. And fans don't know that they're just bringing them all back. Oh, no. So, like, when Batman's gonna well, get his back broken, like, oh, he might not come back. This Superman is on the, has to come back either. This is on the, the heels of Superman set. Right. Yeah, so they're like, we, we we kill Superman, let's break Batman, and then we'll, like, rape yeah. Wonder Woman. Like, it's just, it's be scary. <laughs> all kinds of, like, they didn't just go... ruin everything. Yeah, they didn't do any of that. After this, they were like, all right, well, you know what? Let's bring back Superman. Let's fix Batman. Let's, oh, Jesus Christ. We did. Whoa. What a mistake. So this whole story is Batman fights his rogues gallery, and then Bane comes right when he's at his weakest, and then he just breaks his back, and then the throws most, him away. At the easiest possible moment. Right. He's like, I've shown that I'm a bit badass by weakening you to the point of exhaustion and then breaking your back while you were at home in your underwear. <laughs>
we find out that Dr. Octopus, a couple of issues ago, had downloaded his consciousness into a small robotic octopus that had been chasing Spider-Man, unbeknownst to Spider-Man. And it, while he was distracted, stabbed his the base of his neck and downloaded his consciousness into Peter Parker's body. So while he was distracted, like... Like fighting battle? the Hobgoblin, yeah. Okay, so... His spider sense didn't kick in for Well, this. because his spider sense was blaring at the action of fighting the Hobgoblin. So, you know, there's all those dangers going around. The spider sense doesn't necessarily say there is this thing, this small thing that's attacking you. It's just, there is danger. It's like warning. Yeah, it's a warning. Very generic. Yeah, it is. I thought it was because... like he could sense something behind him looming up on him. Well, if he's looking this way, then he can... You know, extrapolate that there's something behind him, but well, no, like, there's no like, he, like. Doesn't he like duck and dodge yeah. things? Well, that's duck. See, sometimes he's like, yeah, well, like that's just a very specific side. like. Well, that's something's his... coming from this direction. I need to move like right. Well, that's a combination down. of his extrasensory perception and his agility and speed. He is just automatically reacting to danger, and I think he's also using his own regular perception. Like, I'm looking ahead. There's nothing ahead. Danger must be behind me. I need to move and avoid that. Darkseid is a big baddie. He rules a planet all of his own called Apocalypse. Uh, the planet is a shithole. He has a little underling who dresses like uh, Emperor Palpatine, but like if Emperor Palpatine was like weak and frail, actually he kind of is. So yeah, yeah. Like so basically a little Emperor Palpatine. What uh, what what do you mean it's a shithole? Like it's a it's literally a planet with holes in it that blast uh, polluting energy, oh. and it has. What is the uh, uh, economic basis of this planet? Like... The economic basis is everyone who lives on Apocalypse is either a mindless drone monster okay. or a slave. Do they grow food there? Is it possible no. to live there? Like how I, do It's, they it's actually kind of uninhabitable. uninhabitable. Uh, from what I've seen of Apocalypse, uh, it is completely incapable of sustaining life. Okay. Or, at, at the very least, vegetation. <laughs> well, so, I mean, maybe they eat rocks. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they, 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 very, rock eating they could be eating rocks or tasting. fire, because it seems to be the most <laughs> abundant resource hey, on Apocalypse. If you Apocalypse. want hot rocks, we got hot rocks. We got hot, we got right. rocks, we got hot rocks. We got it all. So Peter Quill is half man, half human, yep. and half Spartaxian. I'm sorry, what? What's that? Uh, uh, the, well, Spartax is a, a, a planet that his father comes from. Is that where Spartans come from? Is that him? Nah. Why does he look human? I can't help but Because he is a person. He's a, he's a human. You said he's half human. Yeah, he's well, he human, looks... Alien. Well, the alien Spartaxians look just like people. Like Kryptonians or any other convenient <laughs> alien race. God damn it. I can't help but notice that... Spartax? Sounds like Sparta? Yeah, like Sparta's actually within it. Yeah. Yeah, it is, in fact. <laughs> I mean, you just put an X on the The end. fact is, like, the Sparta... So that must mean something, I right? mean, it's... Is like, that an accident? Uh, no, well, I, like, no, warriors, absolutely not. Well, scroll is skull with an R in there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I know that it was definitely crafted that way. I don't know if it was actually made that way because they were like, ooh, we're going to borrow elements from the right. Spartan culture. But I know that Jason, J- dash S O N, Jason, Jason, or Jason. If you're just in a hurry, I'm reticent to use the word Jason only because it's so close to Kalel and yeah. Jorel, and I I like the idea that like no, his name's Jason. It's yeah, just spelled differently because he's from another weird. planet. Like where they spell different, right? Where they use dashes and apostrophes indiscriminately. Even, even though, though Spartaxian they... doesn't have any. Of those no, it doesn't. Yeah, nor would they even have the same alphabet. No, oh so no, apostrophes it's just, not even. I think it's funny that, that you know they just. Oh no, my name just happens to sound like a very popular name from the planet. Right. So Barry Allen goes back in time, stops Thorn from becoming, from killing his mom. Okay. But as a result, creates an alternate timeline in which the Flash never existed. Right. right. Now, this alternate timeline had some ramifications. Some of them being the rocket that landed from Krypton in Kansas. Didn't land in Kansas. It landed in Metropolis, and it had the effect of an H-bomb in the middle of the city. And it wound up killing Why? a whole bunch of people. Why? Would it, it didn't have the effect of an H-bomb in Because it was Kansas? fucked up. Because it needs to be dark and gritty and crazy. That's why. Well, what does that have to do with Flash? The Flash never the Flash, changed anything the, with where no, Superman but the, landed. But the, but the Flash did go back in time and never became the Flash. But how, and his going through time created a ripple effect that influenced... Altered the position of the Earth? That altered the position of things and stuff. 
So, for example, that is really shoddy. Yeah, I know, but it's a but it's supposed to be a throwaway fun flash story. I see. It's just supposed to show you this crazy dark future where Joe Chill, this common petty criminal, goes up to this wealthy family, Thomas and Martha Wayne and their son Bruce, and he says, "Give me your money." And then he winds up shooting Bruce instead. Oh. And so Thomas murders Joe Chill, oh. and Martha Wayne goes crazy and cuts her face open to be a smile and becomes the Joker. And Thomas Wayne becomes Batman. What? Holy shit! Yeah. So they create this massive army to take on Super Thanos. Team. Yep. And uh, what's Spider-Man gonna do to Thanos? Nothing. Thanos, how his name? It, what's then? What's even the point? Why even bring him along? Uh, he just well, they put out the call and every, and these are the people who showed up. Yeah. I mean, like, it's what's Wolverine funny. gonna do? I think Spider-Man even says, "What am I supposed to do?" Yeah, there's actually a scene where he like has this thing where he's like, "Look at all these heavy hitters and this cosmic problem. Like, what am I gonna right. do?" Is this, in it. Is this Doctor Doom? Yeah, Doctor Doom joins the team. Because Doctor Doom is required. Is massively powerful, and he's also like, I think he just hears about it. What is his power? Doctor Doom's power is his m his massive intellect. Oh. Doctor Doom is so in intelligent, and he also has, he has some, some kind of electricity thing. Well, he has he can he can That's produce power suit. from his gauntlet. It's all it's an Iron Man suit basically. Oh. But he also has some control over the magics. Oh. Uh, Doctor Strange is a bit of a sorcerer because his mother's soul was taken to hell. And Doctor so he's great. Doctor, Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom. Yeah. And uh, so he has been dealing with the magics to try. Well, aren't and... lots of people's parents taken to hell? Like, well, what? no, but hers was taken unnaturally. Oh, I see. Also, he can't abide his mother's soul being in hell. Oh. So, so even learned. though she was a bitch. Well, I don't know if she was a bitch, but she did make Doctor Doom. So who knows? <laughs> right. And I'm also the green fucking goblin and a crazy asshole. Oh my god. And there's so many great moments where like, because it's Doctor Doom, it's Loki, it's Emma Frost from the X-Men. Like, that, how is, how is, um, how is Norman Osborn like on top of Doctor Doom? Well, like, he's not. Oh, okay. But All he right. thinks he is because he got to be put in charge of S.H.I.E.L.D. and right. because he's an egomaniac. Okay. Doctor Doom is just like, I'll work with you because right. you have a position of authority that will help me get what I want. But I'm not your partner. I'm not subservient to you. And right. in fact, it's because of Siege that they split up. Like, Dr. Mm -hmm. Doom's like, I'm not I'm not backing whatever your, whatever your plan is. And Osborn's like, but I'm in charge! And Doom's like, in charge of what? <laughs> I'm actually a monarch. You're in charge of dick. So Osborn gets his Dark Avengers together, okay. which also includes the Sentry. Now, the Sentry is an, an integral part of this whole story. What's a Sentry? The Sentry is the Superman-looking character right there. The Sentry has such power. He has the power of a million exploding suns or some such nonsense. And he, what does that mean? It means, like, imagine the energy output of a million exploding suns, and that's the much... That's a, that's well, that would obliterate power. the Earth if you right. even unleashed a fraction of a percent of it. <laughs> well, certainly, but he can harness it and, and channel into punching a guy or flying. With the power of a thousand suns. <laughs> yeah. Again, the... He would obliterate the heat generated by just... <laughs> Wielding that much power. Yeah. Well, maybe he's like maybe one of his powers is that he can focus the power or contain it, and so he only uses like point zero 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 one percent of that power I see. to appear superhuman instead of a world destroyer. He would only need the power of like one sun. Oh to yeah, be to be powerful. really powerful. <laughs> yeah. But he's got a thousand. He's got a thousand. So. It's freaking awesome. <sighs> but the other the the, the how yin... do they measure that? How do they even know? I don't know. How much it... <laughs> he looks pretty powerful. I'd say about as powerful as a thousand. That's suns. pretty much it. I mean, it's more like a name. It's more like I like, see. Like uh, Superman, like the last marketing. son of Krypton. Like right. no, you're not. It's like something but... his people came up with. Yeah. Put out on the interwebs. Yeah, exactly. His PR over. folk, like he's got the power of a thousand exploding suns, and only physicists were like, "Ah, uh, that's pretty fucking dangerous." <laughs> As opposed to the average layman who's like, "Cool." Yeah. Hank Pym can't escape being a wife beater, and he beats the ever loving shit out of Jan, aka Yellow, uh, Wasp. Yeah, it's really bad. But not before they perform oral sex on each other using their varying sizes. What? Wait, in Ultimatum? In Ultimates. In Ultimates. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember that part. Oh, it's insane. Picture. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, they ignore that shit because that was inconvenient. Now Hank Pym is really super duper in love with her, and she's like, yeah, I guess I'm totally with... She's basically Rihanna in this book. <laughs> okay. And, in Tumble. fact, characters say, hey, didn't he beat the shit out of you? And she's like, mind your business. <laughs> and you're like, 
<sighs> is there an ultimatum in this book? <laughs> the ultimate? No. <laughs> no. <Damn it. laughs> I just want to use the it's word. It's basically Magneto's performing or is is offering an ultimatum to everyone. Uh, t- but there isn't one because he's basically saying die, die, die or, or die. die. Yep. Yes, it should have been called ultimate sacrifice or ultimate anything, but that's not one word. Right. That sounds pretty that. final. Yeah. So, uh... This is a pretty dark ultimate book. Ultimate finale. It's, it's the most grotesque book. You know what else happens in this book? Uh, a monster eats... The blob eats wasp in the tumult of the... Ah! It's yeah. Oh, God, he it's is... It's like a zombie book. Like, yeah, gore, but only so. there. Is it also... I don't see where he even gets her. Nope. Like, you just stumble across him don't eating her. It. Somehow as a result of the city being flooded. Yep. The blob eats wasp. Mm-hmm. Like, what? Because... Because it's because it's fucked up and hardcore. Yep, and it's actually one panel, and it's the panel in Dark Knight Returns where he says like Batman, darling. That's it. Yeah. Right. But from that, everyone extrapolated like maybe the Joker is in love with Batman. Right. So in this book, there's a lot of sexual language that the Joker uses as like a term of affection for Batman. Mm-hmm. That was how it was in the books that we picked up when they collected it. They took out every sexual reference Joker has at Batman. Oh, why? Because they don't want Joker to be gay. Like, they don't actually say what happened. They just did it. They censored their own books in the trade paperback form. So if you pick up a trade paperback of Batman Death of the Family, yeah. you will not get the purest version of the comic. You will get a neutered version. Who Ooh. complained about that? I don't think yeah. anyone complained. I think the edit- I think editorial reread it and they were like, I don't like that. Yeah. And they made them change it. I don't think that any person who read it was like, Whoa! Joker's gay? That's... Right, yeah. And by the way, he's not! Like, you yeah. know. Or if he is, who cares? But I don't think that it's about Joker being gay. It's about rattling the Batman. Yeah, it's yeah. about showing the Batman, like, affection. It's about making the Batman uncomfortable with yeah. Joker's affection for him. Yeah. Like, it's it's all games. Yeah. And, it's just an aspect. Yeah, and by the yeah. way, they actually wind up changing some dialogue and thought boxes to remove subtlety and make things more overt. So, like, things you might have interpreted are now clear as day. Right. It's almost as though editorial re-read it and went like, this is too weird. Huh. And the censorship shit <clears throat> really bothers yeah. me. Yeah. So, anyway, but there's this moment where uh, Batman, like, is rattling the Joker at the moment where the bat boat submerged. So it's this big, like, waterfall okay. in the caves. <laughs> and Batman's like, but I know who you are. I figured it out years ago. Like, I know who, I know what your real name is. And if you come here, darling, I'll whisper it in your ear. <laughs> and Joker grabs, and Joker covers his mouth with his hand, which has a joy buzzer in it, and like blasts his face, <laughs> and then jumps. Oh. Like Joker's like, I would rather die yeah. than let than, than than live with you not playing my game. I'm trying to remember where the hell we are. So we oh. got some dinosaurs. So uh, oh, a di- a T Rex chases them. And it's got the Venom symbiote on it. So it's a Venom T-Rex. No! <laughs> what? Did... There we go. Oh, my... All right. Did someone force that to happen? Awesome. Or did the Venom no, symbiote the Venom go, symbiote like, was... check that out? The Venom symbiote was chasing them. It, like, you saw it, like, one time in the background while they're talking. And then, like, the next time you see it, it's on a T-Rex. It's just uh-huh. things that Mark Millar wants to see Steve <laughs> McNiven draw. That's awesome. The idea... The whole idea of Nightfall is actually a reaction to 90s comics. Oh, yeah? The whole damn idea behind Nightfall and what New Batman Nightfall? 94? Okay. So they're actually trying to do something kind of clever. Yes. They're trying to yes, be like, they are. Violent idiots are dumb. Yes. That's exactly what they're trying to do. Okay. And, uh, in fact, okay, so, like, when Jean-Paul Valley takes over as Batman, the first thing he does is he changes his outfit, and he's like, I'm gonna get my gauntlets, and then he's like, I'm not strong enough, and then he makes this obscene Batman costume, which... For the time was super awesome right. because Image was out. The, the editorial department's like, you want to see a fucking '90s Batman? You want to see that? I, mean, I guarantee you, you do not want to see that. <laughs> Here you go. And they gave you, and they gave it to you. And they were like, "Here you go. Here's '90s Batman." And it's stupid, and you don't want it, and all you want is Batman to come back because you're scared and alone and afraid, and you're offended, and, <laughs> and like this obscene bullshit is happening. This and you're crazy like, Batman's like screaming at you. Yep. Doctor Octopus is a fat guy with 
mechanical arms. Well, he's like Batman. He's not a hero superhero. No, but even he's Batman like has pushed out. his body. Yeah, well, Doctor Octopus yeah. has notoriously been drawn overweight, and well, he's got the robot arms. He yes, doesn't need to be fit. But his arms are fit for he, him. But he has fought with like Reed Richards, Daredevil, Spider Man, all Captain America. He's fought with these superheroes. He has no. Like Defense. he doesn't have an exercise program. No, he has no cardiovascular he like need it. improvement. He right, everything. but he still gets punched in the face. Yeah, <laughs> I still and hear his brain has been slo has been sloshed against his skull so many times that he's dying. Oh, he's dying. I see. And his I body you starts to explain how he can survive. No, he's no. Oh yeah, like that James Bond villain. Yeah, yeah. He's dying. His body's shutting down, and so he find he he's basically like I'm gonna die. So I need to create one last great masterpiece as Dr. Octopus, because Dr. Octopus not only is Dr. Octopus, but he's also moonlighted as a guy called the Master Planner, because he's also a super genius. So he he plans super crimes, and he hasn't done that in a long time. So but... It's really funny, because Master Planner is a uh, it's an online website where you yeah. get to plan events. <laughs> and I'm the Master Planner! Your wedding's going to be delightful! Um, Darkseid also has a different uh, motivator. He is in ever pursuit of what is known as the anti-life equation. Do you, what hap How does it work? Like you write it down. Yeah, and the it's world ends, or... if you if you. Uh, <laughs> or do I... you have to like write it down and then it tells you how to build the machine that ends the universe? Well, that's the question, and that nobody really knows what the anti-life equation is. We just know that it is an equation. Do you read it and it ends life? Do you say it and it ends life? Uh, do you put it into a computer and it and ends life? Do you put it into a three D print machine and it makes no life? Like. Who, is who that, has that ever been answered? Uh, I saw it answered in the Justice League cartoon series. Oh. Uh, Lex Luthor, go to the Source Wall, which is basically like a cosmic wall in space where all <laughs> knowledge and everything that ever was and will be is kept. Who put it there? The, the people who created everything. Okay. So yeah, I, I have no idea. It's just that it sounds cool to say Darkseid pursues the anti-life equation, right. and, and we comic readers are just kind of like, sounds okay. cool. <laughs> I hope he doesn't find it. <laughs> Whatever that means. So that way, in I five hope years, he's really bad at man. Yeah. <laughs> Jason Spartax in like the seventies was attacked by. Actually, he was involved in a war with what are later discovered as the Badoon, which is an evil alien race of like warmongering, kind of like. Vicious aliens. Are they lizard Spartans. people? They look like lizard people. Yeah, they actually, actually look right up to the face. You did. Uh, they look kind of like the aliens from V, a little bit. That's what they remind me of. They're reminiscent, reminiscent of that. Uh, I don't know who that is. No, the 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 show V. For there was a show. Uh, there was a mini series on TV called V, where like lizard people come. They actually remade it, starring Marina Baccarin. Never heard of that. Nope. One of you knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> What happens to the Flash after he saves his mom? After Does he, he go back mom, to his present time? Yes. How? <laughs> well, he comes back. Well, it's like in Back to the Future 2 when they... Well, he just runs back. He just runs back. He's like, I saved my mom. Great. Now yeah. I'll go back to the and, present. But he goes, That's impossible. But the the second he into saved, an alternate tangent. Because the second he saves his mom, yeah. he should lose his powers. Yeah, he shouldn't exist. If this is all cyclical, then yeah. he, the second he saves his mom, he should not be able to run fast enough to go back in time. He should be stuck there immediately. Agreed. Well, maybe it's he not doesn't happen. run forward in time. Maybe he just stays, like, he just walks off, and then, like, himself... Yeah, he, like, gets pushed into uh, the present? No. He doesn't... No, I'm sorry. I don't know. But, you know what's funny? They maybe there's a delay. Movie. Yeah. Maybe there's a delay. He still has... There actually is kind of a delay. Like, when Marty's when... getting erased, it takes him a while for, like, his hand to get erased. Yeah, and everybody likes that, yeah. so that seems like a plausible explanation. Yeah. What happened was, Thawne was too afraid to see what would happen. It removed Thawne from the time stream. Or it removed him... From it, it, it untethered him from the time stream, yeah. so he can. So he has his powers, and he can fuck with Flash because it doesn't matter anymore. Like he exists. He's that's like, a, I won't be, I won't be erased because right. I live here. Like that's incredibly he lives stupid. Of time. What he lives outside of time. He's he lives like outside of time. Lord. Also yeah. incredibly stupid. What do you want? <laughs> if something's gonna affect the Flash. Because he suddenly lost his powers, yeah. and Flash was the person that inspired this guy yes, to become yeah. the Reverse Flash. Then there is no way for the Flash to not exist that well, this guy still exists. I think the well, explanation is he time. came from the future. Like he didn't come, he didn't exist. The in Flash the... came from the future. Well, maybe he was wrong all along, thinking that if he killed Flash, he would. I think that's. It, I think that's it. If he killed Flash, he creates like an alternate timeline. Right. It, that's like totally separate from his. So. Mm -hmm. 
Like it doesn't actually. But if he kills him, then he exist. still doesn't get inspired to become reverse. Right, but well, he that's still exists. Timeline. That's another. It just creates another timeline. He could have just been wrong the whole time. Yeah. That that would happen. But Flash still exists. That's just the thing. Either well, Flash comes Flash, back to his but, present time but with Flash his powers. Flash went back himself. Yes. And did it. So like it affects him. I don't. It doesn't matter. Because he used the cosmic treadmill. Yeah. I'm, I'm very angry at this Whereas the story. other guy used something else. Used... Like, there's a guy named Eric Masterson who is not Thor. He just was worthy enough to wield the hammer of Thor. So he touches the hammer, and he becomes Thor. But everybody around him thinks that he's just Thor. But he's not Thor. He's Eric Masterson. And throughout this book, it's actually kind of annoying because it, he, Eric Masterson is a 90s holdover. Eventually... That Marvel, Marvel thought people would like a cool, edgy Thor, so they let him get a hammer, and his name was Thunderstrike, and he got to keep his cool ponytail, but wear like a jacket, <laughs> and like he's lame and stupid. So eventually, they just got rid of him. Oh, but good throughout this book, he's he keeps thinking because all these thought bubbles are in the book. Mm -hmm. Like I hope they don't suspect I'm not Thor. And you, as a reader who doesn't know anything about like, this obscure moment from the 90s Thor era... You're like, are what? Like, what are you doing, Thor? Why are you having this weird existential crisis about yourself? So then they fight Magneto, and Magneto winds up using Iron Man's repulsor blasters and Cyclops' visor and blast the shit out of Wolverine until he's a skeleton. <laughs> he just kills Wolverine. But... He's still filled with metal, right? Yes. And he doesn't tear him apart? No, we've seen that before. Why not watch him get melted by optic blasts and repulsor blasters? It's... So then, oh, by the way, Wolverine, as a skeleton, stabs Magneto in the stomach with his adamantium claws. No! Yes. No! What? So then, Magneto vaporizes him until he's nothing. How? With the blasters? I don't remember. Or just... I think with his magnet powers, he like pulls apart his adamantium. Guess what? You should have done that in the first place, Magneto. Yeah. Oh, that's it's such so bad dumb. writing. So this is dumb. so dumb. That's so terrible. Yeah. Hang on, let me see this shit. Here, Ethan's on it. Okay, he's not just a skeleton. Oh, right. There's a little bit of gristle on him. <laughs> so there's some. So he has a couple tendons that can manipulate his arm. Yeah. He blasts all the way back to California, and then he walks the rest of the way. He runs out of fuel, like almost there. So okay. like, he, it takes him right. three days to get back. And when he gets back, one of the old farmhands is there, and he's like, I'm sorry, the Hulks got bored, and they killed your they whole killed family. Your family. Of course they did. They showed up a day ago, and they killed your family. Yep. Sorry. Yep. Of course. Right? Yeah. Because how else is it going to end? Yep. So then Jesus. we get a double-page spread of snicked. It oh, just says, <laughs> just the word it literally snicked. says, yeah. snicked. And you're like, <laughs> Yes! Is that how that issue ends? Finally! Oh, no, issue. He's got, like, the Hulk strength oh. within him. Oh, okay. And then Wolverine fucking plunges his claws into his stomach, and then he hulks out. And he's this big, clay-face-looking, old, garbled-up Hulk monster. Yeah. And then he eats Wolverine, and one of the Hulk kids, besides the baby, survived. And he's like, Pa, what happened? Oh my god, like Wolverine killed us all. He's like, nah, Junior, I got the baby, we're all good. And he's like, and I ate him up. And then he's like, oh no. The Wolverine regenerated in his stomach and then blasts out of it with his adamantium claws. <laughs> and then steals the baby. Okay. And then rides off into the sunset. <laughs> like that's his baby now? With the yeah. baby? Yep. With the Hulk baby? With the Hulk What's baby. he going to do with that Hulk baby? Raise it. Batman Nightfall is... I mean, like, I would love to just get into the nitty-gritty of it, but, like, it doesn't matter. It's so superficial and bullshit. Well, what happens after this? After... So, like, okay. Like, crazy Azrael Batman takes over. And he's going This nuts. is what happens what? after this. <laughs> Nightfall and Night Quest. Now, Night... I... Hold that. Yeah, read that. That's... Why would you read that? Well, if you were reading this Batman, is a college time, well, yeah. textbook version of Batman. Just, if you're reading every Batman book, he took over writing Spider-Man. Uh, kind of hinted at Mary Jane and Peter Parker kind of getting back together, and so they were kind of getting closer to dating again okay. when Peter Parker died and Doc Ock took over. So he's like, oh man, like half the work's done for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm so intelligent and charismatic, there's no way she's going to turn me down. Because right. she's in love with this guy. Because the other thing was, when Doc Ock got in there, he also kept all of Peter Parker's memories. 
Okay. So that way, no one could be like, hey, remember our secret handshake? And he'd be like, of course I remember our secret handshake. Right. Uh, that way it's all dispelled, all that bullshit, tropish stuff right. is gone. Don't have to do that. But as a consequence of that, uh, the memories conjure Peter Parker's consciousness. A ghostly, spectral, Obi-Wan Kenobi type consciousness that lives in Dr. Oct Dr. Octopus's brain. No, Mary Jane doesn't sleep with him because there's something off about him. He's trying too hard. It's really weird. Yeah. And then, eventually, he's like, Ah! Blast! This is too hard! Wait a minute! Peter and Mary Jane had sex thousands of times! I remember all that! I'll just jerk it to those memories. <laughs> oh, God! He actually says that? That's terrible. Not that specifically. Well, no. But it's he's not like that. It, but it's that. It's that exactly. And Peter Parker's ghost is like, No! Really? <laughs> Because he can't leave. It's, he's tethered to the bodies. He's like, yeah! I don't want to see this! Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it looks like they fight. That's the book. The Justice League fights. Oh, the Justice League fights each other? Yep. And oh, then cool. they fight Darkseid. The end. <laughs> it's literally a crossover. It's yeah. every crossover you've ever heard of or read. The Justice League has a misunderstanding, they fight each other, then they meet Darkseid, they fight Darkseid, and at the end they realize, hey, we should be a team. What if more Darksides show up? Right. The end, dumb. It's so freaking bad. <laughs> but really? people eat this shit up, they love it, it's... And you know what? It's drawn by Jim Lee, it's super it rad and cool look looking. It really cool. Um, yeah. but everybody acts like a moron. I just read something called the Cancer Curse? Yeah. The Cancerverse is like a nebulous zone that you don't want to be stuck in. Because you get cancer? No, you don't I get don't cancer in the cancer Cancerverse. <laughs> it's just named that. It's like a constellation. Like, it's not... It's it's astrological. Oh. It's oh, not so it's like, 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 like yeah. the Libraverse. You don't, like, grow extra tissues and cells and oh, then die. Okay. You you just go there and you're stuck there. Is so, there, like, a portal to it in the constellation of cancer? No. Something? How would they even know what the constellation of cancer is? Because the stars are going to be all different from where they are. Yeah, well, I but assume answer like, is like our interpretation of the right. word that in, you know, Spartaxian or is something totally different yeah. than we call it cancer. Race. In any case, uh, it's actually a holdover from a big event uh, with the phalanx and the annihilation wave where Peter Quill and Richard Rider and Kane. The phalanx? The yeah. Greek formation of, of shields? <laughs> yeah, well, it's not that in outer space, okay? Much like the Spartans and the Spartaxians, it's totally different. They just named it that because it sounded familiar to people like Stan Lee who were writing comic books for people. So give me a freaking break. <laughs> we haven't even gotten to the damn plot. I know. It... So we need to recreate the circumstances that made me into the Flash, which is to say, I need to be struck by lightning. So... And covered in chemicals at the time. Yeah. So Batman's like, uh, <laughs> no. That's insane. That's a crazy thing to do. Does he know the exact chemicals to bathe himself? Yeah. He's just like, this is crazy. No, he does. Okay. <laughs> so they get that, the chemicals. That would also be really funny. They, they put There's a try. Uh, sodium chloride. Well, it, it happened. Oh, this other stuff. It was kind of vague. Smells? I'll just point a bunch of stuff. Does it actually work? No. He gets struck by lightning and he gets severely burned. And he's going to die. And he's like, is it he didn't work. Is lightning or they put him in an electric chair? They put him in an electric chair. That's right. They, they put him in an electric chair and then they blast him with light. And he's like, and it doesn't work. So they bring him up to the roof and he gets struck by lightning. Oh, okay. And then he's the Flash. Oh, okay. That's amazing. So it had to be 1.21 gigawatts. Right. Now the fact that and because of the Flash, gigawatts. he can yeah he can heal fast as well. Oh, okay. Just because so he's the Flash, he all the burns. Yeah. yeah. And then he makes a new Flash costume really fast because of the Flash. And he's like, yeah, and there. Like, he can make costumes. He's a you know, seamster. Yeah. Well, he's been the Flash for a long time. Yeah, I guess he that he's, had to, he's had to take care of his own stuff. But he, he also learns really fast. What does yeah. he make it out of? What material is it that it can fit in a ring? So the Flash is back in action, and he and Batman team up. Who's... Is this Hawkeye? It's Bullseye <laughs> in Hawkeye's costume. Why would he... <laughs> because Hawkeye can't miss, and neither can Bullseye. Oh, and you can't have Bullseye, a mass murderer, right. running around on your team. So they just dressed him as so, Hawkeye, so and now nobody, he's Hawkeye. nobody knows that he's Bullseye? Or no, because Bullseye... Because he's wearing the Hawkeye outfit. Both. Well, when you're in the outfit, I trust you a little yep. bit more. And Hawkeye himself, the real Hawkeye, uh, was too busy being a ninja named Ronin. I thought he was dead. He came back to life after House of M. Oh, that's right. Scarlet Witch put him back to life, and then yeah. he shows up later, and he's like, I don't want to be Hawkeye, but I still want to fight the good fight. What can right. I do? And they're like, well, we need a Ronin, because originally Echo, this deaf superhero that was in a Daredevil book, was Ronin. Okay. And uh, even that was a retcon, because when Bendis first invented Ronin for the new Avengers, it was supposed to be Daredevil. 
But then everyone guessed it was Daredevil immediately. <laughs> so then they made it up that, like, it was Echo wearing a man suit underneath the Ronin costume the whole time. Like, wearing, like, padding and muscle shit. Well, who is... Was that Echo is weak? Well, no, it's just that it's just that they had been drawing anatomically Ronan for several issues oh. as a man. I see. And so when they decided to change the character mid book, they were like, "But it's a girl. It looks like a guy. He's got like the he's got the physiology of a man." I see. Oh, she's wearing a man suit. And they're like, "They're not gonna they're not gonna buy that." And they did, I guess, like, or or whatever. It doesn't yeah. matter. So then, like yeah. later on, Hawkeye bangs Echo, and then after Secret Invasion, they don't invite her back to the New Avengers. So like she just leaves, <laughs> and then there's just a Ronin costume in New Avengers. So like Hawkeye puts it on, he's like, sweet, <laughs> no commitment, and I get to be a new character. That's fine. <laughs> I thought there were gonna be words. Like he was just thinking the words. Oh, like, sharks eat these guys. Does he have like a psychic link, or is he literally using sonar? No, it's a psychic link. Well. Because he talks to them, right? So it's like in, in the, their mind. In the comments section of our Aquaman review from Off the Rack, uh -huh. somebody was like, he doesn't talk to fish, retards! <laughs> so, um, maybe he doesn't. Oh, but I thought he it did. It sure looks like it. I thought he talked to fish. I Look, think he does. We talk to animals. We talk to our pets, like cats and dogs. They don't understand no, but the they words. know what he's Here's saying. Here's the thing. If, if I had a mental communication with a dog, and I were able to mentally... Make the dog do what I want. Right. And it's not slavery or forced against his will. Right. He does it because I compelled him to do it. People would say I could talk to dogs. Yeah. That, so that, that Aquaman exactly talks to fucking fish. And if he uses his words once in a while, what does it matter? He's still communicating yeah. Yeah. telepathically. And well, why, does he, why does he just run really fast and go back in time? Because he can't. He doesn't have the cosmic treadmill. Well, How does he, he not have it? He's the it. Flash now. He can't. Because reason. What? Yeah, because he can't. He can't do it. Ah! So anyway. I hate this sure book. Was, but and this is how it gets really stupid because now that it's shoehorning in. Oh, oh Nick, this is where it gets. Well, this is where it gets stupid because I was worried it might have been a little well, stupid before. Well, Void finds out Loki manipulated everything and then kills Loki. Oh shit! Yeah. Shit. Well, if Loki can get blown up, then like any of these Avengers can get. Oh yeah. Killed by this Void. But then Thor just kills the Sentry. The end. What? <laughs> That's really it. So then uh, he picks up his skeleton, throws it in the sun, because he's got the power of a thousand exploding suns. It's right. Like pulling, bringing it all back. Well, that wouldn't even do it then. No. You need a thousand suns. <laughs> uh, Cyclops holds a press conference where he's like, "Please, let's like try and live in peace," and then he gets assassinated by the very bullet that killed Scarlet Witch oh. and Quicksilver. Oh, jeez. Fired by. Quicksilver, who turns out didn't die, and it was all an elaborate ruse. Neither Scarlet Witch nor Quicksilver died. What? Quicksilver ran the bullet really fast. What? Into his head. Oh. So but fast how did he fake see his own death? Oh, I don't know. Oh, they don't explain it at all? No. Yeah. I don't know, because... Because it did. would be more interesting. So that nobody's dead, because anybody... Except for everyone else. Well, except... He could be dead, and then like, oh, he's not dead. Right. Then anybody can. Yes, but they don't bring them back. <laughs> and then, so what is the point of this book? To to get rid to of kill a, bunch of, a bunch of people. Yeah. Then then Darkseid shows up, and he's like, hey, how come this Earth isn't conquered yet? <laughs> and then the Justice League trip over themselves to show how badass and cool they are against Darkseid, yeah. and lose. And then they lose. Because right. that's what happens when you first <clears throat> fight the bad guy. Now, when yep. they lose, they just get hit really hard, yes. and they go away. And it's very much like the Ghostbusters fighting Vigo. Or Gozer, okay. where they're like, okay, so when did we lose control here? Yeah. That's Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> it's very much like the first Ninja Turtles movie. Okay. When each, each right. Ninja Turtle goes up against Shredder, and individually they can't defeat him. Right. But then Splinter can beat <laughs> Well, I'll say this much. I bet he never has to look for a can opener. <laughs> In the time, and she says, because the history of heroes has, was shattered into three, long ago, that's the three properties, mm -hmm. splintered to weaken the world for their impending arrival. Yes. We must all stand together, the timelines must become one again. And then she merges the timeline right. with Barry. Who is she? And who are, who's they? Who's, who's their <laughs> arrival of who? Has that happened yet? Or is that still like an event that maybe that's going to happen in DC? They in the new 52. You know what? There's a book that we shit all over called Future's End. <laughs> 
where they come from an odd dark future and come back. No! No, that can't be the goal. Well, because they're saying that they, there's there's a rumor that the the Earth that we enjoyed before the New 52, the, the universe that like Final Crisis took place in, right. still exists in the multiverse. And like the future's end shit is going to somehow come into play and link the New 52... And that universe that we that we had before and put them together. But it's so bad. I know it's so stupid. Like I say, this Mario. incomprehensible cover. Yeah, is like so it tells you nothing about what's well, going to happen. Well, it's just like the book. It's like whatever. Well, fuck it. It's just a bunch of shit in front well, of you. I want to put Doctor Strange here. on the cover. I yeah. want to put Daredevil on the cover. But Daredevil's Everyone's... not on the book. Yeah, fuck you. Well, it's a big pile of meaningless shit. Yeah, you kill all so many people and it does horrible... nothing. Yeah. I mean, like, and, but, like, and like, if you, if I name all the things that happen in this book, there's a huge title wave that destroys Manhattan. Captain America and Thor fight through an army of undead zombies in hell. Uh, <laughs> Magneto shifts the tectonic plates of the Earth. Wolverine dies. All those things separately, you hear it, and it's like that sounds awesome. And I'm like, hey, all those things fucking happen in this book. Yep. That and sounds on paper like the most epic goddamn comic you've ever read. And you know what? The most epic goddamn comic you ever read sucks. Should be BFFs with say that again, and now I'm Batman. Barry. So it'll be like it is in the Okay. Comic. Well, then I have to be his dad. I don't oh, have yeah. a. Where's your? T- I don't have a. Look, Flashpoint here's, Batman. Here's costume. old man. Batman. All right, well, that'll be yeah. Bat. No, yeah, that's the closest we have. All right, son. Yeah, dad. When you died, I lost everything, but I have a glimmer of hope what? thanks to what Barry you, Allen. What do you mean when I died, I'm not dead? No, okay. but in my timeline, you died and I survived. Oh. Oh, that's really fucked up. I know. And your mom became the Joker. What? Yeah, it totally, it totally bowed. Why would she become the Joker? That doesn't even make sense. Losing your child makes you go fucking crazy, apparently. Just like, it makes you go Joker crazy? Evidently. Does she fall in a vat of acid or some shit, too? No, she cuts her fucking face. It's fucked up and crazy. <laughs> Needless to say, I've divorced her. <laughs> but she's also my greatest enemy. Oh, hey, Batman, what are you doing here? Hmm, interesting. Now, this is a very strange, groovy thing that you guys are <laughs> doing right here. <laughs> oh, no. It's Batman 1966. Get out of here, Batman 1966. Nobody likes you. Nobody People likes pretend you. to like you, but they don't really like you. If you had stuck around longer, you would have ruined everything. Hang on. I have my spray right here. Bat spray. <laughs>